All right, gentlemen. This is the podcast we have that has the most potential and the most likelihood to have the most eyes on it since our first. So we have to be on our best behavior. What? This is ridiculous. No way, brother. Listen, I understand the idea, but I am a free spirit, and I will exercise my free will, and you cannot stop me. So true. I will not stop you. And by best behavior... You didn't let me finish. Because by best behavior, I mean our most genuine, authentic selves, but also don't be mean to... What's his name? Or we can be mean to whoever we want. But don't be too mean. Listen, listen, I'm not only going to be mean as hell, I'm also going to lie. I'm going to lie a lot. You don't understand. I'm going to be a genuine... I'm going to be genuine in my lying. (laughs) I love lying, dude. That's my favorite pastime. I like everybody yeah, no, listen. Not a chance. God, was, God was cooking when he invented lying. And that's true, honestly. It was. There's nothing There's nothing like it in the world. No. no as, but... as, much as, never, as much as you want to disagree with that, you just, you can't, you can't fight it. Something that is not a lie is that there is some, some good wrestling that has happened in these last few days. Whoa. So true. So Welcome true. So true. to the next episode of the Scramble Bunkhouse Deathcast, episode six, or no, it's episode seven now. I think it's seven, right? Seven was... yes, yes, it's episode seven because the last episode was our longest episode yet, where uh, John and I had some internet and uh, timing issues, so Kick had to go at it on his own. For See, most I, I think you guys, you guys might have just had a conversation without me because, like, I was busy that day, but I also didn't think we were recording. Like, I thought we kind of no, agreed, you, like, oh... That, you, you told me. You guys yeah, both I, told me. Yeah, I came in, and I was like, hey, uh, I what, asked, what are you, no, what I are asked, you doing? I asked both of you, I asked both of you when the next best day would be. You said it was that day. I asked multiple times. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, I came I, in, and then I asked you what match we were going to be watching, and then, funny story, You, asked, you knew phone, what match we were going to be watching. You literally knew. You literally knew, dude. We planned it ahead of time. See, I might have told you that uh, it was okay to record on that day in a fugue state. Uh, sadly, I was busy uh, making money, so I couldn't come to the podcast. Oh, yeah. uh, I was too busy with all of my money. Um, so I apologize. Uh, I hope you had fun, Cake. Now that money goes towards a calendar and a marker so you can write the next schedule in on it. All right, dude? That's hey. all I to say. Hey, man. I got more calendars than time. What do you mean? What's that even mean? What are, words, what are you saying right now? You're not saying words. You're, you're hey, saying, let's talk about some wrestling, brother. Saying non sequiturs, dude. Let's talk about some wrestling. Oh. All right. These fools have had their time. So I think it is my time hey. to go on a bit of a rant about what we all just witnessed. Everybody who is going to be watching this podcast, I assume... If you have, if you're watching this podcast and you haven't seen Action Wrestling Presents Dean, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. But two of us were there live, myself and Mr. Cakington. John couldn't make it because he had, quote unquote, better things to do, like sitting at home and watching Masato Tanaka matches all day. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. This, is, this is a crazy whoa. thing to say. Bro, I live across. I live like across the country. Like, you can't just say that. I'm, there was I, a man from yeah. Illinois who came to New Jersey for the show. What's your excuse? Well, Illinois isn't that far away, okay? He did say there that. There are planes say, oh, that exist. Well, well, I don't trust those. And also, I'm not French. Don't you dare make the accusation that I am French. I know what you were implying there, okay? Oh, oh just How was I implying that you're word. French? We both, you, you know, I know, you know, okay? Oh, I, 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 I was now. Oh, yeah. oh, no, I'm yeah, just your okay. French Canadian, which is worse. Okay, True. well, that, okay, listen, I sadly could not make it. Uh, planes were an issue. I did actually, I almost did come, but life is just kind of hard. And the person I was going to stay with, it wasn't sure if I'd be able to stay with them if I went to New Jersey. Uh, and also, I just didn't know if I had the time. 
So sadly, I could not make it to Dean. Very but these two guys, these two motherfuckers, they were Thursday. there. Okay. It, yeah, it's on a Thursday. I had class, dude. I couldn't. I, I couldn't skip. All right, I have already missed too much. Um, but these two guys were there live. Uh, I caught some of the show. I kept going in and out of it because I'd have to like, like I'd have some free time. I'd pop in, watch a little bit, then I would leave, and then I would come back in and watch more. And then I left again, and then I popped back in one more time and I finished the show. Uh, and I also watched two matches before the recording that I was like, oh, I want to see these two just so I, I can talk about them, because they sound fun. Um, but I think I've seen half of the show in full, and because of that, I'm going to be relying on these two a lot for the other matches, because I have nothing to say. <laughs> so true. Well, what are the matches you saw, just to get it on the record? Okay, uh, I saw uh, the Gypsy Joe Rules tag. I saw Cerebro versus Loco. Fucking Gringo Loco. Uh, I saw... <laughs> this is because I was watching live at the time. I saw Cruel versus Warhorse. Okay, okay. Yes, we got okay, to talk about okay. it. Yeah, well, we were already going to be talking about it. Don't worry. Um, of course. Erez Mikowski. I just watched that earlier. Uh, that was whenever I had to leave. Uh, I came back in for Slim J versus Adam Priest. I was able to see that in yeah. full live. God bless. God bless. Uh, I had to leave again, uh, so I missed the tag after with Sinner and Saint and the Mark Smathers team. Then, uh, I, popped back I popped back in like halfway into Dog Collar, but I rewatched the full thing earlier, and then yeah. I saw the entirety of Thatcher Macabre. You, didn't, you actually didn't miss as much as you said you did, honestly. No, well, I missed seven out of twelve. I missed five out of twelve matches, so a it's, little bit less than half. It's you missed yeah, the, the action part, part of the, the show, part. not the Dean part of the show. That is true. Yeah, you like it did feel like that after intermission. It was like all the uh, the sicko matches, except for like uh, I think Green Girl and Cerebro was part one, right? It was part one. It was right before Cruel War Horse. If they had, cool. if they had switched that around with the sinner and Sade wasted youth tag, that would have been like half a action, half uh, Dean, or half Sakuna yeah, Kaida, really. It yeah. genuinely would have been two completely different shows if they just moved one match to a different location. Yeah, <laughs> I think it like flows better as a show because of it. Because yeah. Cerebro Gringo is almost enough in the vein of something that you might see on action, like on an action specialty show. And it fits kind of in that environment. And the Wasted Youth tag is just kind of some fun... Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily just going to call it filler because there was some interesting... Just like some decently fun stuff in there. But it was a fun way to get the crowd really ready for everything that was to follow. I think they... Um... I don't remember where the match happened. They were like right before the co main, right? Like they were just before those two. Matches. Yeah, the tag matches before yeah. the final two matches. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, it was like a pretty solid like reprieve. But like even then, it sounds like an insult. It's not an insult. It's just like, you know, it's just like it, it was like, oh, well, this is here now. I wonder what's coming next. Yeah, but, like, know, I, knowing, knowing what was coming next. There is, and there is genuinely like, something to be said about the importance of a match like that tag like i haven't seen it but from what i've heard from people it was m like it served its purpose well in breaking up the card like the big hitters because you know if you have hit after hit after hit like it can almost become overwhelming mm -hmm. so yes. having something like that there is really important mm -hmm. and it was good too center and saint are a really fun team to watch man yeah i i've never seen travis williams i was actually pretty big into judas icarus like before the pandemic because he started appearing on 3 to one Battle, which I will talk about that fed more <laughs> when we get to the main event. <laughs> but uh, he started appearing there, and he had this like really great match with Dan Makabe. And I thought this guy ruled. And I saw a picture of him from the show today, and he's got like a beard now, and he wears like tights and shit. And I remember seeing him like just in street clothes working in 3 to one Battle. <laughs> and he was like a, had like a baby face. So it's like he's crazy. Totally, he's a totally different human being now. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, he looks like he's still like fucked up in the head. <laughs> he's still like a freak, but like Almost he's definitely. like, a, he's like a different built person. different. He uh -huh. looks different. Like, totally different dude otherwise. He's a different breed. And, okay, freak. before we continue any further, 
for anybody who was involved in wrestling on or making that show, thank you so much for putting it on and putting on such like a genuinely loving tribute to Dean Rasmussen. He's a guy whose writings have like either directly or indirectly inspired all of us and the people who have inspired us and the people who have inspired the people who have inspired us. And just to see all of the people who, you know, really put so much effort into writing about this stuff and categorizing it and cataloging all of, you know, the shit that we never thought we'd see on tape in person. And it felt like a celebration of that in a way that not a lot of wrestling really does. Some people say that wrestling at its best is like a variety show. And to those people, most of them, I'd say you haven't seen enough variety shows to make that comparison. But this is the one that really felt like it was a grab bag of a bunch of different styles that people really love. Yeah. And it's the people that, you know, formed this kind of ragtag community that is like very separated but kind of gets unified at moments like this and it was a really cool feeling yeah i i will say i never knew dean i know i know a good amount of people that knew him um but that fucking dean's writing is like crazy like i i I, at one point i sat down and went through like a bunch of old dvd vrs like he's just such a fucking great writer in terms of like passion and like being genuine and like in terms of like storytelling in writing, like he's a ma- he was he was a master at doing that. Uh, I do fucking tildes in my writing because of him. Like mm-hmm. you know, he he was a he was a vital figure in a lot of this shit. And yeah, no, this is a this is a show that like you could absolutely tell that not only was this a tribute to uh, the whole DVD VR sphere and like the Saguna Kaida kind of sphere of wrestling. But specifically, there was a lot of stuff that, like, would have been something that Dean fucking loved. So, yeah, I, in terms of what the, the show was actually trying to accomplish there, they fucking knocked it out of the park. And every match delivered in the way that it should have or over-delivered. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it was, it was exactly what it was supposed to be, too. Because... I think it's really easy to dog on, like, the action-mandated matches on the card or whatever, and you could argue that maybe you're justified in doing so, but it's I think it's important to remember that, like, it's not like the people in the action segments didn't want to, like, be there, because it's a very, no. very, very likely that they, too, were equally as inspired by Dean's writings as guys like Makabe were, or any of the other people, like Conway yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. They were, they were placed in like the more traditional type matches, and that's not taking away the inspiration that they most likely took from the guy. And I, I, like, okay, like, definitely gonna have to discuss Cruel War Horse, obviously. Yeah. But in saying that, it's important to remember that they're still, they still glean something from Dean, or at least like you would hope that, right? And right. It's not yeah, they threw a fucking fireball in that match. He would have loved that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like if not from him, but from somebody who had a similar line of thinking as him, and you know, it's it's hard to separate somebody who gets it and somebody who really wants to be it. And I think the show is just a really good celebration of the fact that sometimes you don't really have to draw that line. You just have to, you know, understand what it is that you're doing there. And as long as you understand that, it goes well. I think. Right. It went exactly. great. It went great. It was a, it was a, it was a beautiful time. It was the most fun I I personally have ever had in an event ever. Me too. But like a lot. I have not been to a lot of wrestling events. I I mean I've been to plenty of local ones, and those have always been a really good time. And I've been to a couple more major ones, and those were always really a good time. But this just felt. It felt ideal, I guess. You know. It felt really, really ideal. Like, I remember when I was buying the tickets, it was, like, second row. I was like, that's kind of funny, because there's no way they even have a third row. (laughs) (laughs) And then I went there, and you're not going to believe it, but there basically wasn't. It was... There were on two sides. There was barely... There wasn't even a second row on two of the others, though. No, not at all. It was like... But, like, that's, that's what I mean. Like, that's what I enjoy... I've always enjoyed wrestling that takes place in buildings that aren't meant to have wrestling in it. 
Like it's not it's not an it's not an arena and it's definitely not a venue. It's just a place that they could afford. And that was like I mean that was exactly what it was. Okay. I have one thing to say about that is that it was impossible to fucking find the venue. Because it took uh, my GPS took me like four different places. Okay, I'm gonna have to talk about how I got to the venue with a good friend of mine and my story of meeting a person that all three of us know well and have had conversations with on multiple occasions, including well, not not even on multiple occasions, pretty much on the fucking daily. One Mr. Armani and Armani Senior at because I was at a diner preparing for the show by eating and i was going walking up to pay i feel somebody touch me it's him standing right next to me inside of the diner i thought he was just like outside waiting because he didn't know where the show was and we were gonna drive there like uh my girlfriend and i in one car uh, armani and his dad in the other car drive there together but he just walked into the restaurant and we met there and then we spent the next 30 minutes driving around this compound trying to find the entrance to the show and then we when we find what we think is the entrance it's the exit and all the wrestlers are standing back there (laughs) yeah yeah and so then we find the entrance and you know what besides the difficulty of finding the place i loved it so much it was tiny i would man it was just it's it was, it was not like that half of a building. How many people do you think were there, Cake? Um, I don't, I don't like a fair amount. Less than, I genuinely less than like some of one of my local indies get though. I think like unironically, which was great actually, kind of ideal. It felt like a really. Let me low check game. on Cage Match. But oh, while, you're, while you're checking that, I was gonna say, no that. way, no way that the fucking uh, the action owner sent in a fucking report of how many people came to the show. <laughs> uh, but no, it was easy to find. I'm sorry to say it. Like, <laughs> genuinely, I've I've been up there once before. I went up there once for a Paul London seminar, and um, I don't know what time you got there. Admittedly, the show was late at night, um, but there's a big old sign that says H two O written in the glass. <laughs> um, directly front and center, it says H two O on it, and then all you have to do is you have to just pull behind it, and there's a a big open garage where you can see a ring on the inside. Now, admittedly, no, the garage was closed. Yeah, the garage I didn't see the H two O thing because it took me to a different place, like a I mean, completely different plot. I don't know what your GPS is trying to get there. <laughs> I think your GPS just hated you or something because it's right next to an Anytime Fitness, which is how I found it when I was going to the London seminar. Um, and again, it was late, so you probably didn't see the H two O logo on it. But like, no, the H two O logo was invisible to like at least five or six different people who came here. They went to a different place <laughs> that had a wrestling thing outside. They said that there were like three or four people who had come there before them trying to That's find crazy. the same venue. So there were like a good That's half crazy. dozen people. Who I'm didn't so get there on time because up, they couldn't find the H2O arena. I'm so confused you looked up, though, because I just looked up literally H2O Wrestling Academy, and you're not going to believe where it took me. <laughs> it, it, it took me straight there. Dude. I, don't know, I don't know what you guys put in. It, the thing is, it didn't say it was the H2O Wrestling Academy on the, uh, on the tickets, and I am not enough. Mm-hmm. I do not have enough I've spent far too much time outside to recognize the H2O Wrestling Academy by the uh, venue that it is. Uh, whoa, so I can type whoa. in the direction. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that Cake did because I know I just like I just typed up the directions like they said that they were in the in the thing. I I had no idea it was the H2O Wrestling Academy until I fucking got there. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna check this up real quickly. All right, so I need. Um, I'm going to post this image real fast of the announcement of Mad Dog Damus. I need a word-for-word word read to me what it says on it. Oh, no. Did oh, you see, no. I was going by the email that sent me where oh, I, that, that so? said, like, you were accepted. Not the, uh, not the marketing that you edited them for? Not the, uh, not the marketing. <laughs> I only edited the video. I didn't. They didn't even tell me it was going up. They didn't even tell me it was going to be oh, at yeah, the beginning okay. of the show. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, man. Yeah, okay. 
All right. I'm just like, you had to save this image to make that, is all I'm saying. And I'm just like, you know, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I, hey, you know, great show, though. Great show. <laughs> Love going to Dean. Awesome time. Really, really wonderful experience going to Dean. Uh, man. Yeah, oh, despite I mean... like three or four people having a hard time finding the venue itself, <laughs> it was so much fun. I genuinely <laughs> don't think it could have gone any better because, like, I know that there were, you know, there were some matches where I was skeptical about whether they were going to live up to the hype, like the astronomical hype I had built for them in my brain, but they did very, very well. Very, 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 very well. I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in a podcast, but I definitely mentioned it in a call at some point, which was when uh, Mad Dog and Dan Moose got announced. Um, it, like, fueled me for, like, the coming weeks. And, like, every so often, I'd be at work, and it'd be, like, a really stressful day. And I'd be like, man, this day's rough. And then in, like, the back of my head, I'd go, but I will get to see Mad Dog Damus in, like, three months. And right. I was like, you know what? Today's not so bad, actually. And then I, was, I would just feel better. It was like an antidepressant. I would just think, man, there's going to be Mad Dog Damus, and I'm going to see that. And I just felt better immediately. Dude, Colin, <laughs> Colin Mad Dog Damus fucking Zoloft is crazy. <laughs> Hey, but it's true though. It's it's true. Every so time, every time I thought I was like, man, that's crazy. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know. That was the match I was most excited for by like a lot, by a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And it, oh man, it was so fun being there, dude. It was such a good experience. I think right. we should talk about the show in chronological order and not just start with what yeah. we liked first, because then we'll just be at the end talking about War Horse Cruel. That's yeah. okay. 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 Yeah, I, th I think chronological is probably the best move. So, uh, listen, at this point, I'm I'm probably going to be very quiet for the next uh, ten or fifteen minutes, however long it takes you to get through these first three well, matches. It is, it is about to be a one man show because I all I missed the opening match, so oh. it's going to be all Ethan explaining the first match. Well, Ethan, what did you think okay. about Colby Carino versus Alex Kane for the action title? Okay, Colby Carino versus Alex Kane for the action title was actually a very, 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 very fun match. It wasn't really anything that you would consider, like, essential or to write home about, but it was perfect for the role and position that it was in on the card. It was pretty right. much uh, Carino doing the CM Punk Samoa Joe thing, where he was just going for headlocks constantly, but instead of playing it super seriously, he played it for laughs, and it was very, very well done. He would just get a headlock in pretty much any situation that you could find. And once you do, uh, if you do decide to go find it, I want to know if you hear, like, the people chanting in the crowd about things like, uh, God, what's it called? I think somebody was chanting Fujiwara <laughs> during it, and that was amazing. But then uh, Kane ultimately won with the, what's it called? He won with a variation of the Regal Plex. It was pretty good. It was a great way to open up the show, I thought. Oh, but oh, the, uh, the 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 market the market cane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm glad you liked it. I uh, I was dro I drove up there with a homie. Um, they're a homie that I've known ever since I started training. Um, and I drove up there with him because I was like, yo, I'm going to the show no matter what. You want to come with me? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? That sounds fun. I convinced him because I said Makabe was going to be on it. And he was like, oh, say no more. And that's how I got him to go with me. But anyway, he was really stoked to see Colby Carino. Um, but we also went to go see Bloodsport and drive in. Trying to get out of Philly was a true, genuine nightmare. <laughs> um, oh, it, said that our, it said that our estimated time of arrival was 7.59 and we got there at 8.20. Yep. Um, so that's, that's, that's why I didn't that's, want to go to Bloodsport. No matter yeah, how bad I want to see the Beast Boys again, I've already seen them. And yeah. you know what? I didn't feel like getting mean mugged by CM Punk for an entire show. <laughs> I love the show. This show that's actually, a retroactive I, like, thing. Seeing Bloodsport live was pretty sick. If right. I were to watch it on TV or like on a stream, I probably wouldn't have been as happy about it, but I was probably going in person. I was yeah. wedding like fuck like, during the Astronauts match, though, dude. I was locked in. At one, point, <laughs> at one point, genuinely, I hunched over and I just grabbed the chair in front of me, just forgetting that there was another person in it. Because I was, Dude. like, so locked in on the match. Dude. 
It was crazy. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I guess we will just mention, because I think all of us have seen that match. The match is good. I, I thought the match is, like, obviously, they're in America, so they're going to do, like, a, a traveling circus version of the fucking oh, yeah. uh, KT Don match. But, like, it's still them doing that shit, and it's still really cool. And they added some stuff new to it. Like, they didn't... Like they, the, the, the finish was, like, just a kind of a, a switch up on the finish of the last one. And it, it was its own match, even if it was very much, you know, them running through the classics for a, for a completely different audience. But it was, it was a pretty fucking cool match to see. All right. I yeah. will That's admit that I haven't seen that match completely in full since it, like, first happened. And when I did right. watch it in full, when it first happened, I was at the pool in the Holiday Inn. And I was watching it on my phone. But still, I could hear the fucking slaps. I could see the blood on Takuya Nomura's face just dripping all over the canvas. Oh, yeah. And the it roundhouse was, it was like beautiful. one of the things ever. I think that's the best way to watch a wrestling match, to be completely honest. <laughs> Probably, right? um, but I especially think the best way to watch a wrestling match is being there, much like I was for the second match on the card. Oh. Was um, oh my god! I'll let you take this one because I, I was not yet completely locked in. <laughs> you were you were kind of zoned out. I see. This is the uh, the good hand versus Amboss and Osha Edwards. I think I know two people in this match, and I only like one of them. I knew uh, Suge D and O'Shea Edwards. I did not know Amboss, and I still don't know who the good hands were. So. That was- <laughs> Um, I know that the good hands were the guys with Suge D and also Suge D, because I think he was also a part of that. He, yeah, anyway, he was. Um, I, I walked in halfway through that match, so I cannot give it also a full, a full critique, because I walked in and then I had to find my seats, which was actually pretty easy, because I saw Ethan and, like, Pogs, and I was like, yo, there he is, and then I walked over. So that was easy, but I also needed some time to lock in, because I had to get acclimated to the room and just the whole feeling of the show. Um, that and there was a guy standing next to me for almost the entire show who was like, I don't know what his role is. I think he's a worker. I think he's a wrestler because he kept talking about training and booking and stuff. But he just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I was like, dude, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. You're a guy. Like, I get it. You're part of the. You're part of the game. But like, I'm trying to watch Dean right now, man. And this dude was info dumping the history of the ants and Chikara during one of the matches. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a, that's a crazy fucking thing to do in a wrestling show. Not if the answer there. There's the, there's the fucking <laughs> not a single ant to be found. Yeah, it was like, man, come on, dude. I'm trying to watch this show. You don't get it. <laughs> Brother, brother, I gotta talk about FIFA really quick. Dude, there was a guy behind me who was, like, so upset at every heel tactic, and he was acting <laughs> like uh, Gordon Soli the entire time. That is not no, how a gentleman yeah, should act. No, that is, though. That's, that's, that's possible. That's actually, that's that's really he was locked in more than anyone else. Yes, he was locked. That's actually he awesome, dude. Fuck me. Cheater, cheater pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually Amazing. sick. So that guy ruled. Um, the guy next to me was really distracting. Um, so I it took me a couple matches to get acclimated to him. <laughs> so, um, but that guy aside, um, yeah, match was fine. I remember I boss did some hoss stuff. I really, I wish I could say more about the match, but I was generally just trying to get acclimated to the building and just the just the situation at hand. So I wish I could say more about it, but you know, I was too busy focusing on other stuff. Right. Right. But then came a match that nobody was prepared for at all, not 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 whatsoever. And I'll I'll take I'll start this one. Um, Actually, which sorry, the- Cake, but I think um, there were a few people who were prepared for this one, and those yeah, are okay. the lucky wow. few wow. who are. Uh, there were a few people who were no, not because of any insider information, but because we got lost on our way to the venue, and we went through the back to ask oh, where the fun was, them. and violence really- forever were standing back there. <laughs> that's see, awesome. it's the big story. So the second forever. I heard the words "open challenge" out of White Mike's mouth or out of the announcer's mouth, and White Mike, who was my new favorite wrestler, was standing there, 
I knew oh, yeah. that zombie was gonna hit. And yeah. when zombie hit, happened. oh man, it was really good. I was like I said, I was sitting next to my homie for the whole match or for the whole show rather, most of it. And when the ugly ducklings came out, and we didn't really know. Who, uh, well, I knew who they were. He didn't at all. But uh, when they said open challenge, um, my homie turned over to me. It was just like, imagine if they got violences forever. As like a joke. As like a, haha, imagine what if it was violences forever. And like maybe two seconds after he said that, Cranberry started playing. And yeah. it was really funny. Because it was like, he said it in the way of like, you know, like this is clearly not a thing that could possibly happen right now. And then it happened, and it was really, really funny seeing his reaction to that. And I lost my mind, too. I was like, holy shit, it's violence is forever. What are they doing here? In Masala gear. What the hell? <laughs> they put it in Masala gear. Yeah, um, I, uh, I will say, I was kind of shocked that they weren't on the show initially. I mean, it makes sense now in hindsight. Yeah. Like, oh, they're a fucking secret, secret announcement, Masala VIF. But, like... I was slightly shocked because I know both those guys are like very deep in the uh, kind of DVD VR sphere. Like at least Dom Greeny was. Um, like I used to buy shit from uh, IVP videos, and like IVP would like share Google Drive links, and you can like click on a thing to see like oh who's all viewing this or like looking at. It. And on multiple occasions, I would get a show and I'd click on the view, and fucking <laughs> Dom Greeny is also viewing it. <laughs> Hell yeah, big dog so. Marini, my beloved. Yeah, no, they were it was a really fun match. I had a great time. Um, it was really funny how Dom just got bodied the whole match. Um by the ugly ducklings. So let's just say control segment by the ugly ducklings on Dominic Garini is such a weird visual. <laughs> Insane to see these two dudes just manhandle Dominic Bone Collector Garini for a prolonged period of time. But it, it was, was hilarious. Tag, Mike, Mike was going crazy. Mike, Mike was a wild individual, dude. He was. He's a character, to say the least. And the name White Mike is inspired. That's, that's an all-timer name. Yeah, no, it's incredible. I have not seen the Ugly Ducklings in, like, a long fucking time. Uh, but I remember really fucking with White Mike. I thought he was sick as fuck. So I'm happy to hear that he is still sick as fuck. <laughs> He's a crazy guy, man. Uh, yeah, that Something was really else fuck about that match was the uh, the finish. It was like a flapjack into oh. a pile driver in one fluid motion. Yeah, the fucking back body drop pile driver. Cause fucking, yeah. uh, that was the old VIF finish, I think. They brought it back. They brought it back. To see them bring it back for Dean was so cool. Because they tried the uh, chasing the dragon earlier, but it didn't work. So they had to go back to something else. And I'm glad they brought it back all the way back to, oh, yeah. you know, their roots. And up next their is roots. a sleeper pick for match. Well, not match, but moment of the night for me personally. During yeah. the tag team match between the Coven of the Goat, Jaden Newman and Tank, introduced by none other than the Rev Dan Wilson. Versus yeah. Manders and Tom Lawler. And the God. reason that I say this match had the moment of the uh, night for me was because I don't know if I will personally ever forget see, looking over to my left and witnessing uh, Manders and Tank shoot headbutting each other 15 feet away from my face and then turning to my right and watching Tom Lawler stomp off of, like, a mini tiny ladder and off of the uh, the ring apron, jump up and stomp a giant hole through the goddamn chest of Jaden Newman. Just within, like, oh, a 20 second me, span. I watched those uh, things happen. Let me correct was, you. Yeah, it wasn't it was the, it wasn't the chest. chest. It wasn't it the was chest. A, it was a super dragon head stomp. It was, it was oh, like, no, on the head, it was head, head even the neck. It was a head stomp. Yeah, it was a head stomp. Was a head. His head oh, was, like, Jesus. locked in a chair. His head was like locked in a chair, and he jumped up, like stomped, like almost on like the fucking the spinal cord, like on yeah, the no, neck. I had a great, I had a great view of it. I watched on on a replay, and they did not sure the point of impact. But rest assured, there was no give on the chair. That in was the background. That was a full flush to the head. In the background, yeah. you could see Armani fucking watching it, and he fucking goes crazy the moment it, like he goes ah. <laughs> Oh my god, in the background, I will I will also say that Armani's dad 
is such he was such he was the chillest man alive he was having the he's greatest big. time he was showing uh our Manu sister the whole show on facetime <laughs> uh yeah, yeah turn it off during this match did she genuinely i think my favorite part well not of the whole ma- of the whole night but definitely of the match was actually the reverend's introduction yes I, oh yeah I, I, yeah I, I sent, a, I sent a clip in Soldier's Assemble of it because it was I, it got caught on the actual feed, but I was losing my mind ever since he started, ever since he yelled into the mic. Once he yelled into the mic and like Dude. audibly peaked it with his scream, yeah. I was losing it. But then after a point, he just he just said he just like kept talking like he was the most confident man in the world, and if he wasn't just saying biker gibberish, and I just like lost it and it was specifically after he said the term the original motherfucker that i just completely broke and you can hear it on the feed i sound like the joker laughing because i was crying i was genuinely crying from laughing so hard at this guy it was perfect. and not because he's not because like man this guy's embarrassing or man this guy's funny but more so just man this guy fucking rules and yeah. i get to and i gotta watch this guy and it, oh my god, it was yeah. so good. It was so good. And also, I don't think you got to see this, Ethan, because again, it wasn't for your vantage point, but from where I was sitting, um, Tank had the most obvious and egregious blade job in all of yes. history. Yes. Oh no, was... I watched the blade like literally right in front of my face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't really miss it, because he just took a knife and just stabbed himself in the head like four times. He did it like times. three different times, too. Yeah. yeah, the camera missed the first two, but it caught the last one because it like it it turned back right when he did it. It's like yeah, this it's, guy's the best. It's you can't ignore it. He just did it blatantly. It was awesome. It was so sick. Yeah, I uh, oh that's the first uh, match on the show that I have seen. I watched that earlier uh, today, and mm. I thought it was really fun. Um, there was a lot going on in the match. It was. I am a fucking sucker for walking brawls. I think they're oh, a, yeah. a deeply disrespected genre of wrestling because they're like, oh, they're just walking around and hitting each other every night. It's like, no, there's a there's a there's stuff going on. And a good walking brawl will have like multiple things happening at the same time. So there's like a, oh, yeah. an air of chaos. There was a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Um I thought Coven of the Goat were really fucking good. I wasn't sure how Jade Newman was gonna do in this match, because you know. Mm-hmm. My most the most experience I have to Jaden Newman is like before he became like a Satanist when he was like a technical dude. Yeah, Ichiban. He, yeah, Ichiban, fucking number one. And him having matches with like a Makabe or something. Uh, like I thought this guy. So I was unsure, but he fit like a fucking glove. He's got great punches. He threw his, he threw some mean fucking chops. Uh, he hit a crazy running knee at one point. Like oh my god, yeah, blasted. Yeah. I think he like blasted Manders with it. Um, he kept the energy fucking going and was like willing to take everything, you know. Like, yeah. and that's pretty much all you can ask for from a guy, including um, the double, the double head stomp. Yeah, the double head stomp, which might Again, which be the part, <laughs> might be the most. Part of that spot was actually when Tank like tried to quote unquote save him. Uh, he was just dead on the floor, and then Tank just walked over. He's like, "Damn, what the fuck did they do to you?" And then he just kept walking. <laughs> He didn't even stop. He just kept Dude. going. He was like, yeah. Oh, no. And then did he you hear Jaden Newman's response? No. He said, they just, they just fucked me up. Help me. <laughs> and then he just kept walking away. Yeah, he just walked away. Oh, I think, man. if I remember right, because there's like an unprotected chair shot like pretty early in the match. I think Jaden Newman yeah. also was the one that took that. Like, he was, he he was, was. game he for was. the whole match. Um... Sanders was, was sick. Like a, fucking. Jaden was put in like a uh, like. Do you know ball crossfire? And he had yeah. <laughs> but uh, Manders was sick. I always enjoy Manders. He was really he was fucking good here. He threw some mean chops, big hits. Uh, Waller was really fucking good. I am a little bit iffy on Waller because sometimes I feel like his work just doesn't like hit for me as well as it does for others, especially yeah. when he's doing more like a. Uh, when he's trying to do more shoot stuff. I don't know if yeah. so, like, it's weird, because he's like a, a fucking accomplished UFC fighter. Mm-hmm. But when he's doing the shoot stuff, there's like a weird disconnect sometimes where it feels like he's not really fully committed 
Um, and that might come from a lot of things, but it just doesn't work all the way. But like in this environment, he was like doing some fun stuff on the brawling. At one point he got in the ring and started throwing like Terry Funk punches. And it was he's like throwing like real great ones too. Um so I thought he was awesome here. Also the the navy blue shirt with the bright blue gloves was a incredible attire choice. <laughs> he was in his element. He was in his bag, dude. Everyone yeah. was in their bag today. Yeah. Um I will say, uh I also will say the finish was really sick. Fucking tank throwing the Goro Surumi backfist. Dude, the Tenryu <laughs> yeah, Enzigiri yeah. from Newman, yeah. the fucking shotgun dropkick Russian leg sweep, crazy combo, like really awesome finish. Um, I will say, I was slightly disappointed because I feel like a lot of this match had like fun walk and brawl stuff, but then every now and then, like I think it was like for every minute of fun walk and brawl, there'd be like a ten second span of like a really heated like fight moment. And I feel yeah. like if they had done more heated fight, it could have been like really like genuinely great. Um, so it, it's more just the, the 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 things that the parts that made the whole felt like there could have been something even better there. Like as it was, it was still really fun. Oh yeah, I felt no, like I agree. Agree. but I also think there's a good chance that they just didn't want to get too violent given that Mad Dog and DM was wrong. Yeah, this is exactly the fourth right. match on a twelve match card. Yeah. yeah. Can, they can, didn't want to like go like all out. Yeah, yeah. It really is like just a victims of placement situation. I think. Yeah, but, e- exactly. If but, that was yeah. like, um, if this was on like an ICW NHB card or something oh, like that. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That would be crazy. <laughs> would be I feel crazy. like I feel like you know action books all we'll four of these guys pretty regularly. Regularly, I'm pretty sure. Like Coven mm-hmm. of the Goat is like an action stable, I think. And then Lawler, Manders works there a good amount, I think. Lawler does too. Like they, they probably should just run this match back and let him go all out, like in a main event sometime. But for what it was, fourth match on the card, it was just a really genuinely fun, like spirited brawl. Also, I do want to say that the Rev is the greatest worker of all time. I talked to yeah. him to get a tank shirt. Because I also wanted to tell Tank that he is the missing moon dog, and he took that as a huge compliment because it is. And uh, to get one of his shirts, and it's the fucking sickest shirt that I got this weekend, besides maybe the Daniel Makabe PWFG shirt. And uh, he was in character the whole time. He was doing the voice the whole time. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. I I was I said to my homie, I was like, I think for the first time ever, Julius smokes has competition. Yeah. No, that's that's a crazy thing to say because I feel like Julius Smokes and the Reverend are like on two completely opposite sides of the spectrum of manager. At the same time, they're like as characters. I mean, kind of like completely oh, yeah. opposite. Uh, but yeah. as managers, they're like very similar. They're very yelly. They're very like one liner kind of guys, and they they do a lot more of like hyping guys rather than being like managers. they themselves are characters. But they're a vital part of them is the fact that they're like hype men almost um so yeah no i think those two are like contenders for just the best managers ever the ref promo at the beginning had me fucking dying the entire time like he's like he's the goat okay he's the best he is dolly rebecca part Uh, after that was the uh three strong motherfuckers versus three flippy motherfuckers match yeah i just noticed this they ran four tag matches in a row yeah yeah it's crazy which is so funny. Just get them all out of the way so we can do all the singles later. Besides one, <laughs> to to hold uh, right, to right, whet right, your right, appetite right. for the main event. Of course, multiple of course, main events, rather. Um, I was not. I thought that this was like pretty in, solid. Yeah, it was okay. I don't know. I wasn't that. I wasn't that for it, if I'm honest. I think that the best parts of the match were when. Um, which was one of the which flippy dude was the guy that was getting the heat on Flacco? I think it was Bobby Flacco. It's probably Bobby Flacco because at one point I did try to get into action and I remember he was like, out of these guys that I have seen, he was the only one that had like really anything going for him in terms of like character. <laughs> okay. Listen, I, not not like okay, but like Bobby Flacco's like a like a he's got like he's bombastic, you know, he's got like shit going on. Yeah, that was that was probably the guy who got the heat going. And I thought the best part of the match was the part where 
um they mess up a spot or whatever so one of the big men just like like did a physical audible and just held him in place in the air for like four seconds to call a spot and then just threw him to the ground that was the best part of the match i don't know i thought for it being billed as like three big men versus three flippy men literally in the title they did do a lot of big crazy stuff like it was just a fine tag match but this but the strong motherfuckers didn't even do anything that strong and the the flippies did do some flippy, but the strongs, yeah, they didn't really strong it up. The one, my favorite part of the match, personally, was when Danny DeMonto uh, said, hold on, I'm going to do something really cool. Bounced off the ropes a couple times and then did a headlock, and someone in the crowd said, Colby Carino already did that gimmick. And DeMonto <laughs> said, eh, I'll think of something better. And he never does. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also funny they were like trying to make a big deal out of one single door and like nobody reacted to that. And then um they didn't even bring out a door, they just brought out a piece of wood, which was even better. They just brought out a big old plank of wood. And that was much better than a door, I think. Yeah, no, I uh I, I fucking hate doors. I've grown to completely hate them. A uh, plank of wood is really awesome. I did not see this match, but if they brought out a plank of wood, that sounds really cool. <laughs> Yeah, m- much better inclusion to use plank of wood over door. But yeah, I don't know. I, it was fine. Like, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed every single match on the card, probably because I was there. Um, I don't know how well I would have liked it if I was just at home, though. And that's kinda, All right, that's so kinda, I wanted... Uh, up next, I really want to talk about uh, the match that happened after this because I think it's one that we're going to spend a decent amount of this episode on and one that uh, has a cage match review that our good buddy and potential robot Corwo sent to me <laughs> that mentioned me by name and it said uh, <laughs> it's the person mentioned who said that they name. were going to uh, send a curse to me if they watched the matches on the show and didn't like them yeah. Oh, I see it right here. I see it right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, hopefully I am not cursed because this show was fucking incredible. Hold on. Let me look well, at I know I'm not going to be cursed. This I'm show was incredible. The, uh, but also, uh, Gringo Loco versus Dr. Cerebra was... If it was on pretty much any other uh, show this weekend, it would be match of the night for that show. Yeah. I think, I think honestly, you said that about... That I was, gonna, yeah, I was gonna say there's like a there's like a couple matches on the show that like three specifically that you would say would be the full on main event if not full on main event full on best match on the card if not for like other matches on the card mm-hmm. um, and you could really debate between the top two like yeah I think we're gonna we, have we that probably we probably will <laughs> actually um but yeah Gringo Loco Cerebro is. Cerebro, Gropo, yes. Cerebro <laughs> versus Gringo Loco. Uh, Broco. Very good match, uh, shockingly enough, to IWRG legends. Uh, before we even start, I do want to say uh, the bit with Dr. Cerebro coming out with his mask on is really funny. If you guys do not know, Dr. Cerebro lost his mask to uh, Santito in fucking 2001. He has been unmasked for 23 years now, and he just brought it back for this match. <laughs> Like, and then he went to WrestleCon the next day because Demus posted a picture of it on Twitter, completely maskless. <laughs> I did not know about that. That rules. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Dr. Cerebro is great. I've loved all the Cerebro I've seen before this. Um, Gringo Loco is a guy that I think is like, I think a lot of people like go, oh yeah, Gringo Loco is great. And there are also a lot of people that go, oh, Gringo Loco fucking sucks. Uh, I think Gringo Loco is pretty good. Um, I will say, being entirely honest, uh, he has the worst nickname in all of wrestling today because it's legitimately just good worker. Like his okay, nickname is just not. saying he's a good worker. <laughs> um, but ignoring that nickname, Gringo Loco is in fact a good base and is also a good wrestler. And he was able to do a lot of good stuff with Cerebro here because Cerebro is a Yave master who is also just a really good fucking wrestler. And Gringo Loco is. I honestly think he's at his best when he's on the when he's working against someone in more of a heelish position, and he was kind of doing that here. Oh, you um, I 
really liked the match a lot. Um, I felt like Dr. Cerebro, he, didn't, he, didn't, he did not need to do anything, actually. Like, Gringo Loco was just doing so much at all points, and all Cerebro had to do was just, like, taunt. <laughs> it was like, yeah, that's enough. Because, yeah. like, he just had a... He was more of, like, just a minute worker than Gringo Loco was, because Gringo was trying to, like... It felt like he was trying to make up for the fact that, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what he was trying to make up for, but I felt like he was trying to do so much just on his own, if that makes sense. No, I, I agree. I think a lot of the bigger spots in this match yeah. came from Gringo. Like, he was a bigger moment type of guy. Uh, I think a lot of the best moments in the match, if I'm going to be honest, were Cerebro, though. Like, because I'm a, I'm a fucking sucker for Yaves. Uh, Cerebro had them yeah. in spades in this match. He was doing so many awesome little holds. Uh, I fucking loved... What was it? Um, he he did, like, some sort of, like, figure four, like, Indian Deathlock type thing that just ruled. Like, he, he was just doing a lot of fucking really great holds. He also did the uh, the Santo fucking bullet dive, uh, which yeah, I wait. love. Can I point out uh, two things jumping off of that exact point? One, Absolutely. watching Yave live, like... Not uh, as somebody who is who likes Yave but hasn't watched nearly enough of it, seeing it live is completely different from seeing it on tape. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's just so fluid and clean and precise that you co- completely get lost in it. It's yeah. just something that you could so easily just sink yourself into and get engrossed by, and that dive. I've seen a lot of dives from a lot of different angles at a lot of different wrestling shows. That was the one that felt the most like it was meant to hurt somebody. It was fucking brilliant. He looked yeah. like he felt like he was in the air for 20 seconds. Yeah, the dives that he was dropping were crazy. That oh my god, I love the dives actually. Especially because they just felt like pushes. Like, he just, like, shoved bro into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into Dean's chair. Dude, he yeah, shoved into, into, he shoved into Dean's chair, and you could see on the feed that, like, some guy behind him. There was one guy that was sitting in the, like, he was sitting, I think, because that, that was uh, one of the things where there was a third row. It was just really small. He was sitting in the third yeah. row. He didn't even try to get up because he wasn't expect. He was like, I'm in the third row. I'm fine. His chair still got pushed over <laughs> because of how... Mm-hmm. Force, how much force was behind the Cerebro fucking bullet dive. <laughs> yeah, like, it's crazy the raw power that the bullet dive had. It was nuts, man. I, I, I had a great time with it. There was a moment in time where I thought that Gringo Loco was going to, like, sheer drop Brain Buster Cerebro from the top rope. Yeah. The genuine moment where I was like, dude, this guy, he's actually about to sheer drop Brain Buster this guy. <laughs> Thankfully, thankfully he did not. But also, I wish he kind of did, though. Yeah, Imagine. well, he had to, he had to do the deal, sadly. Yeah. He did have to do the deal, which is okay. You know, it's okay. Not everyone can do the deal. Yeah. I'm looking through right now. This is kind of unrelated. I found that guy you were mentioning here, Ethan, the dude who said he would curse you if the show wasn't good. Right. Uh, I'm looking through his cage match right now. Just I'm doing, like, an audit on him right now, seeing what this guy thinks of the show. <laughs> Audit. Uh, yeah, yeah. He gave he gave Gringo versus uh, Cerebro a seven. Uh, and then he gave Mad Dog Demus a seven, and he gave uh, Makabe Thatcher a seven. <laughs> uh, he gave Malachi Black versus Johnny Gargano a ten. Oh Jesus he, Christ! <laughs> um, wait for it. Wait can... for it. Wait for it. His favorite match of the night: Slim J Adam Priest. Good. I see that match fucking rules. You know, um, and I yeah. I respect that. I don't mind that. Kind of no that's the only that's the only thing that's about cool. what I'm hearing from this guy that I <gasps> it's shoot head butt lover. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, right now, I know the, that. I, I know this guy. <laughs> I don't know uh, him, but I he, he cool. has a he I has know a legacy. Well, but... <laughs> he has a legacy. <laughs> I know quite a bit about shoot headbutt lover. I, I've, I've heard of shoot headbutt lover. <laughs> I see the rating that he has for a Mad Dog Demu saying that he was expecting a uh, a Black Cherry classic. Um, he has never rated a Black Cherry match, as far as I can see. <laughs> um, uh, in eight thousand eight thousand matches on the match guide. Whoa, whoa! Yeah, now you know why I fucking heard about this guy because he's oh, everywhere. 
8,000 matches. <laughs> oh my this man is God. dedicated. This guy also might be one of the only people I've ever seen that has DVD reviews on his profile. That is crazy. I've never seen that before. This like, of course, nuts. there are people rating DVDs, but I've never found somebody. <laughs> this is crazy. He gave, a, he gave it a 10 out of 10 to Hard Knocks, the Chris Benoit story. <laughs> okay, hold on. Maybe, I think we're all trying back. to uh, avoid something right back. now by talking about the shoot headbutt lover. We're trying to hold avoid on, the best match. I'm, the I'm trying to get a Listen, read I'm, of the shoot headbutt lover. <laughs> I'm he not gave, trying hold to hold avoid on, Hold on, this guy gave Osprey Omega uh, oh, but Gargano Alistair at 10? What's the, oh, I'm trying to understand this man. <laughs> okay, all right, but we listen, we can psychoanalyze the shoot head butt lover eventually, but never be understood. We, we, I do want to say, Shabro Loco, great match. Um, I will be honest, uh, the no DQ finish leading into just like they do the no DQ finish. And then they basically just continue to have a normal match when it gets restarted yeah. as no DQ. I thought that was really funny. I was slightly so disappointed because I, I thought it was like, oh, they're going to start doing some like chair stuff. And there was one more chair yeah. moment. Um, so I was slightly disappointed, but also it's really funny. And Cerebro is still a beast. And Gringo Loco did like a one man Spanish fly. So yeah, yeah, I'm, not, do much, but I'm not okay. super opposed. Yeah, it was, it was just no, a, you know was a great I match. Bet, uh, I bet. Demus was like to Cerebro, you better not do any fucking brawling. I'm doing the brawling tonight. <laughs> <laughs> because, Demus okay, Phil, know, uh, I got the chance to talk to Phil Schneider, like, while I was at the show, because obviously he was going to be there, and he said that uh, when he was, like, seeing everybody get here from the airport, there was a white jeep coming from the airport, dropping off yes! CNJ, Dr. Cerebro, and Demus. None of them are over, like, five foot eight. But they're the three most badass motherfuckers you could find under that height. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I uh, if that's all we got to say about that, I think we uh, it's time to move oh. on to Cruel yeah, versus just... Warhorse, baby. Woo! Uh, Sorry, you're saying it wrong. Okay. You're saying it wrong. Am I? It's Cruel versus Warhorse Jake Parnell. That's right. That is right. I He's apologize. He's doing the Jack Perry thing. And before, before we really get into it, I want to start off with some positives. Because I rewatched some of this match earlier. And coming into this, I was like, I might be a little bit of a contrarian for a few matches. Um, I wasn't sure what matches those would be at first. And I certainly was not expecting or really even hoping it would be this match. Um, and I don't, I don't even think I'll be a contrarian for Cake. I'll probably be a contrarian for an Ethan. I have a feeling he's, he's got some <laughs> strong words to say. But I will say, I don't think this is an irredeemable match. No. Uh, I don't think no, not any either of these guys are irredeemable wrestlers. Uh, I, in fact, would go so far as to say, I think Warhorse is a guy that could be a lot better than he is. Just looking at what he does as a wrestler, uh, he is pretty snug with a lot of the stuff he does like he's like he's got pretty good control of a lot of the shit that he does as a wrestler uh he's got a good sense of like timing um he's maybe not the most exciting guy in the world uh and i think he overcompensates with stupid fucking gimmicks but he was throwing some pretty mean chops and he knew when to hit his spots and i'm okay with that and cruel could be cool if he wasn't just 2024 American Indy Kane. Uh, sadly, he is 2024 American Indy Kane. But there's something there at least. <laughs> Indian, you know? What was that? If he what was 2024 saying? American Abyss, it would be a different story. I, True. Yeah, American specifically remove the, remove the Indy and change the Kane. You know, then we got something cooking. I <laughs> know, um, keep I the say... Indy. This, this, is, this is a nice thing, is that I um, don't know how well it was picked up over the mic, but I actually think Warhorse Jake Parnell threw some of the most consistently loud chops you could ever yes. ask someone to yes. throw. They were nuclear for like seven chops in straight. Okay. That is a great thing to mention. I think there's a spot in this match that is legitimately like, maybe even just straight up great, where 
Cruel eats like ten in a row, like super stiff chops. Uh, hits Warhorse with like a, a kind of not great punch. Uh, then he does the chokes him on the apron, which is crazy. And then Warhorse mm-hmm. fucking runs in and hits a su- like the fucking super dragon dive. And like flies into the chairs. I thought that was a really cool little sequence. It was kind of the only one of the match, but it was really cool. <laughs> Also, like, but you mean uh, where, he didn't uh, super cool dragon dive chairs. into the row of chairs? If it's what I'm thinking about, well, he did the he, he did the uh, fucking through the rope uh, Tobe Hilo. Oh no, no, no! Yes, 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 yes. There, but there are multiple dragon dives, else, but I'm thinking about. <laughs> yes, yeah, he, he did, did like a, a back fall, a fall away slam into a row of chairs where he just fell into the row of chairs himself, and that was yeah. sick as shit. Yeah, that was that like part, right in front of me too. One of the sicker, Definitely. like, single moments of the night, too. I have to give it that credit. That's about all I really had to say on it, because the rest of it felt um, just right. It was just a match, you know? It was just yeah. a professional wrestling match. And then there was bloodism on the Dean card. Bloodlineism on Dean. Yeah. <laughs> insane. How did they pull that off, dude? Uh, it's straight up, straight up monologue pro with a guy who doesn't speak. Dude, fucking. Monologue Pro with fucking Dasher Hatfield. <laughs> like technically, um, how? Yeah, I. Uh, I it, gave that's... you this shot. I gave you this shot, Warhorse. You gotta take it. You gotta finish the job. Go get him. Go gotta... get him. <laughs> like yeah, it was, uh, the job. it was. It uh, was. Yeah, finish was fucking <laughs> something. Um, I think the two biggest things that were working against this match was that one. It was. It felt long. It was the second longest match on the show. It was. A, it was the third longest because I'm. I'm gonna count Loco and Cerebro as one match just combined. Uh, mm-hmm. Third longest match. It had a lot of dead space, especially near the second half, which just made it feel so much longer. And running this match on this show like was a horrible fucking idea. This specific match because not only is this a Dean show where Pretty much, I don't think anyone in the building particularly likes either of these guys. In fact, I think some people in the building probably hate Warhorse no, no, at no, least. No, 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 you're wrong. There was mm-hmm. one individual on the hard cam side who had a cruel, like, sign. You're right, but you're right. There also, was, yes. There was also, I don't know if he was a plant or what, but there was a guy in the front row where me and Ethan and Lucas were all were wearing, like, a Mountain Dew green suit who... Oh no, I've seen him at like kill. four different wrestling shows in the area. He would murder <laughs> for Cruel if he had to. Yeah. Well, okay. I well, don't then know there... if he or not, but Dash Hatfield was like throwing barbs at his ass, but yeah. oh my god, uh, he would have shot someone for Cruel. Yeah, okay, so there were there were some Cruel fans there. Uh, whether or not there were Warhorse fans there is unknown so far. Uh, but there were also probably a lot of people that didn't fuck with either of these guys, and you could tell, because the building was fucking silent for, like, right. so much of the match. Like, painfully so. Like, no, admittedly, yeah, the, the minority were the people who wanted to see this. Yeah, like, I listen, from home, from home it was painful. I cannot imagine what it was like in the building, just watching this match in, like, dead silence. <laughs> It was, I sent a video of it in Fujita's Egg General. It was an experience, you know? The best way that I think I could put, like, the the lack of sound, I guess, was when Cruel made his entrance, he was wearing, like, his two dusty-ass IWTV belts, and he, like, dropped them to look, like, cool and awesome, and you could just hear the thud in the entire building. Like, you can just hear the clack of those things hitting the ground because there was no actual noise to cover them falling. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? Was... I think the craziest part of that is, sorry to interrupt, but, like, the fact that there were so, uh, the noise per person on this show for, like, the semi-main and the main was louder than any other show I've been to makes that so much, like, more stark in contrast. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I can't, I have to imagine somebody involved in running the show that was not part of the action crew. They had to have told the action crew guys, hey, this might not be a good idea. Because, like, it's, the, the people that were also involved in running the show, their opinions aren't really secret. A lot of them are writers about wrestling. And I, I've read some of the things they've said about some of the guys on here. It's not a secret 
their personal opinions. Um, this was just an awful match to run on the show. If you if it had been run on like another action show, it probably could have hit a lot better. I don't think it. it I still don't think it'd be great, but it would be fine. Nice. Yeah, it would have been like endorsed or like encouraged. Yeah, like, but they they ran it on Dean, and it was never going to work. And it no. flopped even harder. Like I, I, it honestly flopped about as hard as I thought it was going to. Like, yeah, no, I just uh, awful choice to run it here. It even if it's not a, even if it's not like a horrible match, just fucking really not a good idea <laughs> it was the total worst show that you could have put it on yeah they had a fireball which was sick as hell yes that was really cool and that was about it <laughs> yeah that that and the spot the sequence i mentioned and the fucking the fall away into the chairs those are like the three good moments of the match in a match that was 15 minutes long uh-huh. um yeah. i love the part where uh the ref also got knocked out of his shoes it was funny but the yeah was- <laughs> yeah it, it was yeah, so that was clearly hilarious. intentional. It was so clearly intentional, though, that I, I didn't like it anymore. Because it was like, yeah, I, I used to describe something else. It was like a wouldn't wouldn't it be cool if type of spot where they were like backstage and they're like, dude, wouldn't it be sick if we hit the ref and then their shoes fell off? And that was See, like the whole thought process. I don't know if you guys heard this. I don't know if he even announced like the ref's names. Uh, but. I, it was said on the commentary, and the second they said it, I realized, oh, okay, I see what happened here. This was so egregiously planned. The ref's nickname is Shoes. Like, brother. Uh... <laughs> Ethan, you got, a, you got anything else you oh, want to say about the car. Car turned on. <laughs> brother, that engine needs some work. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get the oil check, man. That might be hard. Really? <laughs> yes, it's, yes it's, it, um, maybe I heard wrong, but I believe his nickname was Shoes. Because <laughs> it was definitely said worse, in another there's match. Another nickname, there's another referee nicknamed Red Shoes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, okay. The crazy thing about this, oh I've, I've heard his full nickname, and it's, a, it's actually Shiny oh Shoes. God. <laughs> it's his nickname is Shiny Shoes. Yeah. If we're going to be specific here. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay, now that we're talking about the goofs and gaffs of this match, I think oh, we need to the goofiest and gaffiest part of it. Oh, yeah, which is yeah, when yeah. afterwards, after the whole fire spot and Warhorse had to be ejected from the arena, there was all five foot four in an <laughs> entirely like gray suit of Jonathan Gresham came strutting out to the ring and challenged Cruel. And the image that came from it is legendary in my brain I will, okay. right now. I will say the the second I saw Gresham, I immediately said to like I said in the egg that like you because he came out with the octopus mask, but like you didn't even have to put him in that. You could have been like put him in like a pure black hood. You still would have known it's Gresham. Like you didn't have to do yes. the mask off reveal. There's only one man built like that, <laughs> specifically built in that stature. Well, that's Jonathan Gresham, baby. The goat. The goat. <laughs> yeah. The last uh, card go with John Gresham. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I will say this match was all worth it for that moment. Um, and that's why Dean is the perfect show, is because even when a bad match happened that completely flopped, there was still one of the funniest moments of the year at the end. Uh, that finish plus Absolutely this. Sorry. So yeah. There was an even funnier moment. <laughs> there. Yes, there is. <laughs> Our friend Armani that I talked about earlier with his dad who came to the show. <laughs> when Gresham was walking out, you can very audibly hear him on the show feed say, Gresham, you're too small for this. <laughs> Dude. And then how did Gresham respond? That's not what your mama said last night. <laughs> He was so kind to. He was so kind. <laughs> he, he he was like, Armani says that Gresham continues walking away for two seconds and then stops in his tracks, turns around, walks back to Armani, says, "That's what your mama said last, last night, bro," <laughs> and then turns back around and continues walking. <laughs> Dude, I I can't because fucking I think uh I think you send to the you sent to the egg Armani. I saw you get in his face. And we're, like, we're if that there's like a tape delay, of course, because it's, it's a live broadcast. So everybody's like, "What did he say?" And then you can hear right when everyone starts asking that you can hear on the feed, "Gresh, you're too short for this." 
and like clear our mind. No, he, didn't say you're too short for this. he said you're too small for this. That's you're even too worse. small for this. <laughs> you're too small for this. Yeah, uh God. That, that was, was uh that plus another moment we will get to is like Armani's the worker <laughs> oh worker of the goodness. fucking weekend. He's the worker uh, of the Armani. fucking weekend. He he wins Mania weekend. Fucking hang it up. <laughs> Oh my god! Nobody he was on. I, how visible was he on like the actual feed itself? Okay, they turn around because they have to turn the camera to follow Gresham. He is like completely visible. Oh, yeah, right when he right, fin- right when he finishes saying like the line is when it shows him on camera, and he's visible for like a <laughs> solid ten seconds after. And you can see Gresham walk over to him and say it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, my he's god! In full view. Dude, what a fucking legend! Um. Yeah, fucking Cruel versus Jonathan Gresham's coming up. Is anybody excited for that? I know I'm not. Woo! <laughs> I'm excited for it if they do the, uh, uh, what's it called? God, what's that movie? The Spaceballs spot. Yeah, yeah. They should do a, they should do a test of strength. I think that'd be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the last match for intermission, too, so everyone's got a chance to breathe and just, like, relax. That is for, true. For 10 minutes. 10 minute long intermission. Ten min- dude, it felt like thirty because they kept playing the same ad for Day in the Life of a uh, <laughs> Day in the Life of a- of Alley Catch. I almost said Alley Cat because Alley Catch is one of the worst names ever, and I I almost I stop myself every time I'm about to say it and try to say Alley Cat. Um, <laughs> out fucking Alley Catch, Day in the Life of Kevin Blackwood. Uh, here's what's coming up on IWTV over and over and over and over again. One of the advertisements had like cyber Billy music, like cyber hillbilly music. It was bizarre. Um, that rules, actually. That's bad. Yeah, I felt like I was going insane. Uh, I actually, I tap out at that point. I'm like, I'm done watching for a bit. I got to do like work, so I fucking tap out. Uh, so I, I at first I missed the next match, but I did rewatch it right before recording because um, I saw the finish of it at least. Uh, and that match, of course, is Matt Mikowski versus Ares. This was a match that I had to like tap into because I personally thought that Mikowski had the best non-astronauts match on Bloodsport that I saw. I, agree. I still yeah. haven't seen the Masha Shayna match because I was, as I said, in the pool for it, and then I had to take a shower afterwards. But I thought the uh, Mikowski Dempsey match from Bloodsport was fantastic. Cake, I would love great. to get your opinion on it as well. But I thought it this was, was like, it felt like really, really short, even though it went seven minutes. But it was, oh boy, it was like, it felt short because they were just doing so much shit that felt right that it flowed so well. Oh yeah, it felt like, it felt like six minutes, if that. It felt, it felt like five minutes, if that. It was Maybe crazy. Even I, yeah, I I preferred. Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Cage match I, says seven thirty two, and I don't believe them. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that yeah, the I want to ask. Better. The Dempsey match I thought was the better Mikowski match of the day. Right. But the Otis match was fun as hell. Otis yeah. was doing some sicko shit. And yeah. It was it was a fun return to Matt, to the show. It was exactly where I think it should have been. It got people back to being locked in. And yeah, that's what, I don't know. I I don't have a lot to say about it because it was just kind of just like a really fun time. Yeah, there's nothing really noteworthy that happened. I don't think Otis did anything stand out, and neither did Matt. But it was just a fun match. Right. I uh, I am slightly mixed on the match because I'm a I'm slightly mixed on Ares. I've seen a lot of mm-hmm. Ares uh, Ares that I've really enjoyed. Uh, specifically, I've seen sometimes I'll tag with this dude in like fucking just Mexican gyms, not like gymnasiums, like legitimate gyms. Uh, I've seen him tag with this one guy a few times in one of them, and like they always stiff the shit out of their opponents, and I do really cool moves while also stiffing the shit out of people. I'm like, this is awesome. I also think Ares is a guy that is so it's so painfully obvious that he's trying to be different. And I know his whole thing is strange style, but a lot of the stuff he does doesn't fully hit for me because it just feels like he's just trying to be different and trying to be innovative um which is a problem i have with a lot of guys nowadays fucking that's the main reason why i fucking hate blake christian um 
I don't think he's as bad as Blake Christian. Do not get me wrong. There, there's like there's like there's there's it's layers. Like the, there's uh, fucking de- there's degrees to the shit. And there's there's it's like the three D stick figure of the guy poking his head out, just making sure I don't fit in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I think ours is is like a a kind of a tryhard. <laughs> um, I think a lot of the stuff he does when he does it well is like that's it's like neat, but some of it is like he's just like an extra. He's like an extra ass wrestler. Um, and half of it is pretty goofy. The other half is really cool, though. Uh, and I think some of it is so extra, so fucking different that it wraps around to being cool. Like the fucking uh, the he does like the spin kick thing, the the the, the tilt the whirl into an landing on his feet and elbowing you in the back of the head into the kick into the power bomb. But then he transitions it into like a fucking world's strongest slam hold and then into a northern lights. But then does like a full deadlift northern lights. It is with that move is like an SVR 2011 created finisher where you yeah. keep switching position, um, and because of that, I kind of love it. It, it is. Like the, a, it was like a pre Chuck Taylor Roderick Strong combo. Yeah, it's so fucking stupid, but it's really mm-hmm. cool because like this guy, this guy's just doing the wackiest shit. And as someone who really loves SVR 2011 and loves making really fucked up finishers in it, uh. I appreciate that. That's the one move with him that I think fully wraps around to being just kind of ruling. Um, Matt Mikowski, though, is a guy that I've always really liked. Uh, admittedly, I have not seen any Matt Mikowski since his return from injury, I think, like, late last year. Um, so, like, the last Matt Mikowski match I watched was probably, like, 2021 or, like, early 2022. Uh, he was great here. He's always great. And I'm happy to see that he's still great after returning from, like, a pretty bad injury, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, but he was doing some really great grappling. Uh, I can absolutely imagine that he fucking rules in blood sport. Um, and he won with the mighty mouse armbar, which is awesome. <laughs> yes, sir. God bless. So, yeah, I, I, even if I'm a little bit iffy on the match, cause I feel like some of the stuff ours is doing was just fucking just trying too hard. Most of the stuff he did was really cool. And the finishing stretch was really fucking good. And Mikowski's great. And I don't know. I thought it was a fun. It was it like it felt like one of those juniors matches from like 2000s Japan where guys are just trying yeah. to do shit. Sometimes it felt like this was kind of in the same vein where even if the stuff they do doesn't land all the way, it's still really cool. And I, I, I kind of just appreciate the effort of everything. And it, and it wrapped up really nicely. That's exactly what it should have been. Fully. Yeah. Exactly. If it if it if it were what it was supposed to be, Ethan yeah. McIlroy, what do you have to say about this match? You've been oddly quiet. This match, I've been trying to figure out exactly my thoughts on it because I feel like I don't know exactly... Because Jom kind of has explained everything that I wanted to say, but I also wanted to say, Jom, it's very funny that you specifically are against wrestlers who try very hard to maintain their uh, incredible image. And because Ares is very goofy, but I think he is like an alternate... <clears throat> like in some ways people can levy those same claims against Katie Yano. I knew it was I coming. Could I could on. feel it. I could feel it in the air. <laughs> but yeah, but like no, Ari and Katie Yano are obviously very, very, very different. And you could say the same things about like somebody could say the same things about them, but they would be saying them for different reasons. And I yeah. completely understand why you say what you say about Aris. But in this match in particular, I thought all of that were because like, I don't know how well the footage or the feed caught it, but Mikowski seemed, like, annoyed that he couldn't get out of, like, some of Ares's more, uh, I don't know what you would call it, theatrical or show-off like, um, stuff. Mikowski just has, like, eternal pissed-off face. He's always he does. Sick. Dude, he comes out to the fucking Doom, Doom Eternal theme. It's so funny, but, like, yeah, he's, he's, he's consistently in the zone, and it's a zone of anger. Yeah, and it's it, like, like, it, it helps that he looks like cause this is always how he looks. It's like, man, I hate being here right now. <laughs> this is him. But it felt like really, uh, I don't know what to say. It felt really worth the time that it was given. It could have gone longer and I would have been very happy. But oh, yeah. with something like this, where it's t- uh, you're pinning two different styles against each other, it's really cool to see it end in like 
a quick way that another yeah. style might not be able to like you know counter because i'm thinking of one of my favorite different style fights that is in an episode tragically lost to the ether of uh yeah. mouse clicks in kim hyun hwan versus sambo asako but instead of two styles that are like almost um opposites of each other in taekwondo and sambo it's two that are pretty similar to each other in weird ass yaves and weird ass indie inspired shoot style and i just really i thought that really really worked all, all of the matches on this card that were specifically that felt like dean matches had a really interesting stylistic and uh like story thing going into them like a yeah. match that we're going to discuss i think either next or very soon where it's like the two bastions of the southern indie scene from two different yep. generations facing off against oh, one another yeah. and that is and uh that that is next actually it is next it is next but i did one more thing about makowski Ares. Ares's face paint in real life is really really cool like seeing it and the way yeah. he moves just feels like, I don't know, overstimulating, but not in like a really bad way. But it feels like it feels exactly the way he's trying to wrestle. So I think it works really well in person because right. it does feel like he has a lot going on. And it is very strange, especially compared to like the rest of the people on the show, because there weren't a lot of, you know, Jeff Hardy dressers on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I fully agree. Uh, my final note is that you're actually wrong. Kadiano does not want to be different. He wants to be the Joker. And Joker starts with the letter J. What else starts with the letter J? Slim J. Or... Does it? It starts with S. But yeah, you know, if I can... The last name of Slim <laughs> J is, of course, the letter J. <laughs> close enough, Mr. English Major. J. Oh, wow, slim. yeah. That, calling me out. I can't even fight back. So J Slim J. You gotta, uh, say, you gotta say it like he's an art piece. You gotta say J, comma, Slim. J, comma, so. Slim. Yeah. But I think that is a good segue into Slim J versus Adam Priest. I love what a fucking guy. match. Yeah, this I match is incredible. Match. So good. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna rant a little bit about this match because, uh, but I'm not gonna give everything away because everything will be coming in a video soon, partially because I promised it to so many people that I saw at Dean after seeing this match. And that is... Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, what am I calling it? You're probably wrong about Slim J. Because Slim J oh. in this match, if you had never seen him before, is a goddamn revelation. He is a perfect babyface for a situation like this. And from like really, truly tragic circumstance... It kind of like gave the match. Wait, is that the Necro Butcher? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Continue, continue. <laughs> but uh, if that is, I'm gonna be so happy right now. Yeah, it's the Necro Butcher um, in, a, in, a, in a Trump 2024 hat hanging out with astronauts. <laughs> holy fucking shit! Oh my god! No way! No way! No way! Wait, that means I was in like a. 10 mile radius of the necro butcher and i didn't get to see him that is true yeah. but uh but anyway we, we, we anyway. got bigger fish to fry i apologize <laughs> due to like genuinely very tragic circumstances of slim j not having like not being a part of aew anymore because tony khan fumbled the fucking bag harder than i think he has with any other talent uh it Adam Priest came into this match and he was like taunting Slim J for it. And I had to uh I had to retort at Adam Priest himself specifically by saying, at least he has a job with them, motherfucker. Or no, I called him a dipshit. Wow. And I Adam Priest is he's a next level heel too. He not only knows how to like cut you off at the perfect time to make the crowd really hate you, but when he cuts you off at the perfect time, he will scan the crowd to find the person who's angriest and talk to that section of the crowd in particular. Oh, yeah. And those oh, people yeah. will get even more riled up. He just has an eye for this shit that I don't think very many people do. And I think he needs to be everywhere. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> he does not need to be everywhere because we need to bring back territorial. Indian I was gonna say, 
this is the type I'm of match there. that you would that show one. to you, you'd one. show to like a fucking millionaire in like Georgia and say, "Listen, look at these two guys. You will make so much money if you bring if you like create like a a sizable promotion that runs like Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama." like maybe Louisiana, Tennessee, like one that runs a couple states there. These are the two guys you put at the main event. Just look at what they're doing here. You will make money. Like yeah. Adam Priest. Okay, now that you thought of this, sorry, but now. Oh. Hmm? 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 Now that you've said that, I'm thinking about, this is a different state, but it's kind of close by. If the times and everything had aligned correctly and perfectly. God, what would a like a Deep South versus Carolinas match between Slim J or Adam Priest and Trevor Ooh. Lee look like? Oh, <laughs> fucking yeah, Jesus. Um, yeah. but yeah, Kate, what are you saying about this match? Uh, I mean, like I was gonna say, like yeah, for the sake of Adam, Adam Priest's career, I hope he's everywhere. But for the sake of like uh, indie wrestling being better, I hope he just sticks to a specific spot. Yeah, we, I agree. We need more. We need more spot centric guys, but not in the way that they want to be. Yes, a different kind of spot. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I agree. I've legitimately been thinking about this recently. That like, because I've been going back and watching a lot of a uh, southern wrestling. Because I feel like, yeah. like I, I started diving in with fucking uh, DiBiase and Duggan, but I've always mm-hmm. had kind of an interest because, like, fucking, I'm from the south and I'm very aware from talking to like older people that like wrestling was a big fucking deal in Mississippi and it was a big deal in Louisiana and it was a big deal in Tennessee, um, and now it's not. Like, I go to, I've started going to more indie shows in this area and there's never more than a double digit crowd at most. It's usually like. 14 people like it's a it, people used to make a living just wrestling in these states and now you don't even make money doing it um and it's it's, it's troubling it's legitimately troubling to see that and seeing these two guys and seeing what could exist today and just doesn't because of so many different fucking factors it's it's disheartening but it's also kind of gives me hope that there is a guy like Adam Priest who's from Alabama and works in Alabama all the fucking time. Like, that there is something that could potentially develop as long as there aren't extraneous forces that come in and fuck it up. Uh, and that includes Tony Khan. Uh, or alternatively, if the scene is able to cultivate it. Because it, it, it'll take work. And it'll take a lot of people coming together and doing it. It's going to be fucking hard. But it, there's something. And this is the type of match that you see and go, yeah, there really is potential. There really is. Okay, really is it all right? I, uh, I just have two very marky things to say right now about the yeah. two men in this match. And that one, I found out because uh, I made a Slim J highlight video because he is the fucking man. And yeah. I found out that his biggest inspirations, I told this to Cake, and it's something that I don't know if any of you, if you would expect, John. The two biggest, or the two that you'd expect, are Rey Mysterio and Brian Pillman, but the yeah, other two yeah, makes sense. are, are uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, which kind of makes sense. I actually see that completely. Wife. And Big Van Vader. Okay, I don't. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, no, I, I, I don't see that. But God fucking damn, that rules. Um. I, you know I, what? I yeah, see it, you know, with some of like the expressiveness in his selling, because right. Vader is like a very, very expressive seller when he's actually hit. But Slim J is actually hit all the fucking time. Slim J's hit a lot more than Vader was. <laughs> mm-hmm. He has like that wobbliness to his arms. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Nah, but yeah, and great it, match though. Great match. But yeah, the match itself, fucking fantastic. I don't know if I'll be ever be able to forget uh, Slim J uh, getting uh, the guillotine choke on and Adam that... Priest literally oh, guillotining yeah, yeah. him in the ropes. Uh, important, note, uh, important note from Shoot Headbutt Lover. He says that he wished that Adam Priest hit a move after the guillotine rope, rope break. This guy's a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Moving on from Shoot Headbutt Lover. Uh, this is boy that, uh... Yeah, well, on to the guy who actually has a history of having um... his neck broken. 
I would listen, even with the history of neck breaking, I buy that as a fucking finish. That is a in, that's an insane move. I don't know if I've seen, I've seen things like it. Of course, there's the fucking the 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 catapult type thing. There's a lot of stuff, but it's I've funny. never it, I've never seen one with that much like viciousness. Like he like swung him up. Um. Oh. Dude, whiplash right, is a very real complete... thing. Yeah. Bef- oh, shit. I d- already completely forgot. <laughs> I was going to say something about Slim J in this match. But I am also going to say something about Adam Priest. And that I told Cake already because he left the Holiday Inn very early. Because he was also staying at the Holiday Inn. But when I was getting breakfast did I see at the Holiday Inn but Adam Priest himself and what was he wearing on his shirt or what kind of long sleeve t-shirt was he wearing I'll give you three guesses uh fucking TNA <laughs> cross the line you are an idiot two more guesses <laughs> hey hey yo hey come I think on he's wearing Big Van Vader that was Slim J. He was wearing a University of Alabama shirt. Well, okay. Well, okay. That's obvious. I thought it'd be like a wrestling thing. Yeah, okay, you kind of, you kind of, you 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 like you Well, you should have just said it's obvious. Okay, then I would have been like, okay, well, University of Alabama. All right, man. You Fuck you. you. <laughs> Whatever. Guys, Adam Pre. I, I Adam saw, Priest. I, saw, I saw Steve Jobs at a hotel. Can you believe he was wearing a turtleneck? <laughs> Oh Listen, Adam Priest, Adam Priest, good wrestler. The South will rise again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Adam, no, I, 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 Adam Priest is a guy that I've seen, I admittedly, very little of, but all the stuff I've seen is great. This is one of the best performances of his I've ever seen. Uh, Swim Jay is still fucking incredible. He is still a physical marvel. We had this revelation, I think, yesterday that Swim Jay debuted when he was 15 years old. Um, yes, and he was he working. He was working wild side at fifteen. Like he had the uh, he, famous ROH match with uh, Amazing Red when he was sixteen, and I think yeah, Red he was, was sixteen. Yeah, because he's fucking. He, he's thirty eight now. He started when he was fifteen in two thousand one. Like that's crazy. <laughs> and he's still it's this insane. snappy and quick with everything. Yeah. I didn't even know that he had like a history of neck issues too. That adds even more onto the fact that it's insane that he could mm-hmm. do like the shit he was doing in this match. Um, yeah, no, this was just a really great match. Uh, we said it earlier with Cerebro versus Loco. Uh, this would have been match of the night on every on every other show this weekend. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah, absolutely. So next match, I'm oh, tapping out. I had I haven't seen it, but it's Wasted Youth versus Sinner and Saint. Uh, I'm yeah. also tapping out because I stepped out during this match. Oh wow, that's crazy! One day, oh. back a reminder of last week, <laughs> cake. One day, one uh, man only. Oh, uh, you'll get oh, oh, oh buddy. Just, <laughs> just you wait, man. The moment you get enough money, the moment you get your money up to actually come over here, buddy, it's over for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, tell your story walking. So here's what's what's that even mean? Well, actually, actually, don't walk away. You got to talk about this match. Yeah. Tell so. your story driving. Well, <laughs> well, I hope you're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well. Remember, he uh, is driving in every single one of these episodes. He is in the car. Is car great audio quality in the car. <laughs> it is a great car. Anyway, uh, point is, point is, uh, yeah, this match, fun. It was very fun. Uh, I'm not a Marcus Matters guy at all. I do not like the Marcus Matters. Um, I never have liked the Marcus Matters. Um, th- I believe that when I went to go see Samoa Joe in New York for a seminar, he was also there. I can't confirm this, if this is true or not, but it was a guy who looked a lot like Marcus and moved a lot like him. Right. And uh, during a heat segment drill, Joe was like, brother, why are you doing so much shit? You gotta slow down, which is kind of <laughs> Um, yeah. Can't confirm that that was him. Pretty sure it was, though. Anyway. He does um, kind of yeah, look like a stick of butter. Okay. Thank you for your input. That's a 
gets a crazy rejection. What a wow. guy. <laughs> Dude, anyway, he's, yeah. he's ruined. So Mark Smathers. Um, <laughs> Marcus uh, Marcus Slather, if you will. Um, he was fine. I don't like him. Like I said, not a big fan. Austin Luke, I've seen one single time against Davey Richards. So I cannot really say much about him because I've only seen one match of his ever. Um, but the common grip, I've always had Mark Smathers, and it was the same thing here, is that I feel like he has never, ever, ever improvised anything in his life, ever. And if he has improvised anything in his life, he's learned how to do it in the most picturesque way possible. Like um, an evil hell AJ Styles who only knows how to like pinpoint accuracy, make it look planned. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I felt kind of the same here. Um, Cinder and State, very good team. I love their heel work. And I actually really like the ingenuity of their double teams because they don't overdo it. Um, and if they do overdo their doubles team stuff, it's still in such a sick ass way. But they're um their like do si do suicide dive thing that they do. Super sick. Um I don't know. I, I like the match. Um, but like I kinda said at the stop at the very top of like the podcast, uh, two hours ago, was like it was here for a reason. Yeah. It was meant to be like a, well, here's the you know where the last two matches are now. Like, this match is here so you can understand what the next two matches are about to be. And given that position, and like we said, very important that there are matches out there in the world like this. Can't really have a very important to let people them. release their bladders. Okay. <laughs> dude, dude, you came in so loud for that. That, <laughs> that hurt. Um, but you're right. You're right. Be true. You're right. You're right. You're there, right. You're right. There's right. only one bathroom in the venue, sadly. Well, that's... Wait, like, like one bathroom is in, like... Like just one toilet. One, one, inter, uh, one, uh, like intergender family bathroom. One toilet. Oh, okay. Right oh, one, one toilet. toilet. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, you gotta use your, you gotta use your fucking posters. You gotta use your ingenuity. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no. 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 Yeah. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, really, really badass, awesome. Uh, last two matches, but I don't know. Tag was fun. It was fun. Again, cannot stress this enough. Really fun show all around, critiques aside. Um, yes. Did exactly what it was supposed to do in the position that it was put. And I'm not going to like harp on it for not being the greatest thing ever when it was intentionally there to set the stage for two of the greatest things ever. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Sitter and State, good team. Uh, Travis Williams. Wow, <laughs> what a guy that guy looks like. He looks crazy. I was about to say, he's bald as hell. Uh, bro, bro the dude. cue ball fit. Yeah, cue ball fit, bald as hell. And then you got fucking Judas Icarus, like hottest man alive, also on crack. Um, mm. Which, you know, a lot of the hottest men alive are. Um, yeah, uh, I'm happy to see that Judas Icarus is still kicking. It's apparently still very good. Uh, I need to watch more of his work because I have not seen him wrestle since like 2020. Uh, but yeah. I think, yeah, we, we got to move on next. Dog collar. We got to move Mad on to two men who are uh, somehow still kicking after oh, what man. they went through in those, I, like, I, barely 10 minutes of ring time that they had against one another. Two truly insane men having, like, easily the most bloody match I've ever seen in front of my own two very very eyes easily the most brutal violent match i've ever seen in front of my two own very eyes i was so close to mad dog and demus at it i could feel the sweat flying off of them there was like the blood that like flew off of them felt like dropped in front of us on the floor take stepped yeah. in it oh yeah yeah that was yeah. something that i did at the very end of the match um during the intermission i met uh jared goldberg and he was handing out, uh, well, he wasn't handing out zines, he was selling zines, and with them would come a printed out version of his, like, Survival Tobita minigame that he had on itch for, um, and still does have on itch, I believe. Um, and I bought that game on itch, 
And so knowing that there's a physical copy ruled, I didn't have any physical money on me, but he just gave it to me. I was like, that's awesome. I did buy it on it. So technically I paid for this. If you think about it. Right. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But yeah, I got it. It's a really, really cool thing. And after the Mad Dog Demus match and after Maccabi Thatcher as well, like once the show was actually over, I stepped in a pool of either Mad Dog's blood or Demus's blood. And then I stepped on the Tobita card. So, ah. yeah, so now their blood is eternally on the Survivor Tobita card forever. Dude, that's so fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. It's, it's definitely one of, I think it's definitely my favorite like wrestling thing that I own now, probably. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not overpowering, too. It's actually very tastefully done. There's just enough blood that you can tell it's there. Right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was awesome. Match real. Insane yeah. match. Unbelievable vibes live. Seeing it live, oh my god. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Oh the goodness. best part of seeing it live was seeing like just 40% of it at any given <laughs> time because everybody was freaking out and moving out of the way of them because like nobody wanted to get in their way. And the two yeah. people who did get in their way, everybody here knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fucking uh, prayers for Armani's dad. He's fine, but I, prayers for his jacket that he threw out, which is crazy because he has, he has like fucking he has Damus's blood on. He's like, I can't keep this. <laughs> he should have kept. Dude, he should have given it to me. He, I was, <laughs> uh, yeah, he got the fucking fly lariat all over it for sixty dollars. Dude, could have gotten so much for the jacket. Yeah, I would have the incredible things with that jacket, bro. What the hell? Yeah. I, anyway. Uh, I will say, um, yeah, I love this fucking match. Uh, I was sadly not there live. I cannot even imagine what it felt like. Like, you guys have explained it to me multiple times now what it felt like. Uh, I can still cannot Im- I Like, nothing I can think about could even match what the actual feelings were. Uh, watching it from home, though, this was fucking crazy. Uh, I have seen way too little Mad Dog. I've seen, like, one Mad Dog match before this. I know his whole thing is the dog collar. He has, like, ten of them on YouTube. Um, but this fucking guy is, like, incredible. He's legitimately... There is no other wrestler in the United States that truly feels as dangerously, dangerously reckless as Mad Dog. And as a plus beyond belief. Uh, unless you're a promoter. Because, of course, uh, Ethan was able to see this live. Kate may have also seen this live. I, I haven't heard this from you yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were able to see it on the feed. The promoter of action, at like after the first initial outside brawl, every brawl they did after that, he would follow them around and say, Mad Dog, Mad Dog, get back in the ring. Mad Dog, get back in the ring. <laughs> I and know. he kept doing it. Because I'm certain, you know, one of the biggest fucking problems with wrestling in the states nowadays is because of ha- is like how hard athletic commissions have cracked down on it since the 80s mm-hmm. um like i guess part of the reason why wrestling in the south is kind of dead is because there are some of the strictest rules in the south like you can't hit a you can't hit a power bomb in louisiana you're legally not allowed to unless you're the wwe um AEW probably also has that pass but it, indies are not allowed to do it um and I know that it's the same way pretty much everywhere. I assume New Jersey is probably not that different. They're probably not as strict, uh, given there were power bombs on the show. Uh, but they were probably they probably have some rules against outside brawling. Both guys were also bleeding. Bleeding yeah. during an outside brawl is a big no-no. I think nationwide. <laughs> I think it's. Yeah. I think there's very few states where that's allowed. Um, and I don't think very New Jersey country. is one because I think. I think the reason Tournament of Death doesn't run there anymore, because I think they ran that at one point, is because of like changes in the Athletic Commission's rulings, and that might be related. Um, so I, I, I have to imagine that the, the owner of Action was very angry and very upset because they kept doing this brawling, and it could potentially get them banned from running in the state. <laughs> yeah, you can't... Dude, that Action Matt was just... He was on a warpath, because after a certain point, like... I remember he was like, at a certain point, he just like actually physically touched Mad Dog and pointed yes. at the ring. Like he was done. And that's so sick. Like, I think oh the, cam- the camera caught that, I'm pretty sure. I oh, think no, I saw that in the background. So 
It was awesome, dude. I have okay. I have a um, a secret conspiracy theory, which is that his his punishment was that he wasn't allowed to sell merch afterward, because after the show, Mad Dog came out, uh, put two shirts on the ropes, took a photo, took them down, and then left. <laughs> so, my theory is that as punishment for almost getting them banned, Action Matt was like, "That's it, dude." You you can't sell merch anymore. Yeah, no so no went, no money for you. <laughs> so he went out. He took a photo of the shirts to prove that he had them or something. I don't know. He put them back in his bag and left. Yeah, which is, uh, is crazy. Uh, but no, the match is incredible. Match it's, is um, incredible. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's, it's so easy to talk about the obvious parts of the crowd getting owned twice, um, and then all the stuff that happens with the chain. But like, dude. The in between stuff also crazy. Mad Dog's yeah. hesitation drop kick, nutso. Demos's double foot stop sent on. Yeah. Insane. Fucking the fact unbelievable. That he, the fact that he rips off his, his shirt but forgets that there's a collar around his neck. So the shirt's just on the chain for the rest no, of but the match. Because he's not able to take it off all the way, he, he fucking ad libs and starts choking Mad Dog with it while it's still on the chain. <laughs> I know. Like, and then Mad Dog's yeah. like actually choking as well because Demos is moving away, not realizing yeah. that it's all around his neck. Oh, <laughs> God. I, uh, so yeah. good. Yeah. There are two moments that I need to point out because they are secretly two of my favorite moments from the match. Uh, one of them is because it's kind of funny. It's uh, like the last, I think it's the last outside brawl. Uh, Demos throws Mad Dog in the ring and he goes to climb up the, to the top to like do a dive. But he has to stop because he realizes if he does this dive, he has not gone into the ring yet. He's gone from the outside to the top. If he does this, yeah. the chain will probably break his neck because <laughs> there will be uh-huh. too much like torque on it. Um, so then he goes down to the second and tries to go through. But then he remembers that he can't do that because he'll still be locking the chain around the ropes. Then he goes around, goes to go through the like the middle and the bottom. He's like, no, I can't do that. So then he goes all the way down, goes around, up to the second, diving cross body. <laughs> Like yeah. he was struggling because he was trying he was trying not to kill himself. Um and then this is like the craziest tone setter. Like besides the fact these two guys have awesome fucking themes and they come out and they look like a fucking a million dollars. Uh Mad Dog coming out and just whipping the chain into the ring from the outside was terrifying. Oh my God. Like he was throwing I, I heard it. Though, like, right oh my next God. to my face. Yeah, it was cracking. It was hitting the mountain like cracking. <laughs> He almost, Dude, he, he, he almost hit the ref. It was singing everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, this is, I'll be honest with you, this is like, this is probably my match of the year as someone who's seen it twice now. I've only seen Sting, Darby versus the Bucks once. And I think in the moment, I was like, this is the match of the year. Maybe like a match of the decade. But like, I, I could even tell in the moment, I think I'm getting too sucked into the hype of this is the final Stinger match. And I was watching with a group of people that were like crying. Um, it's still really fucking great. And I didn't think it'd be, I did, at least didn't think it'd be topped as match of the year. This match was like incredible. I loved this match. I think this is probably, this is like almost definitely going to be my match of the year. Uh, it was probably the closest any American match has come to like any of the brawls in Mexico. Any of them. This is the closest really? America has, like USA has ever gotten. You know, and it makes Down sense considering time. one of the guys is one of the guys in his demos who was part of a lot of those Mexican brawls. <laughs> but oh, my personal yeah. favorite part of the match is actually the immediate beginning when Mad Dog whips the chain and it looks like yes, you like lost a tooth or something off the chain that cracked. Yeah, dude, it cracks into his chin and he's in the corner for a solid ten seconds checking his mouth. I think he probably did like lose a tooth or something. <laughs> Because uh, Ethan pointed out there was mouth blood, so it's very possible that it just uh, instantly happened, and he like yeah. instantly cut his yeah. tongue or something. Oh yeah. my god! It I was such a good, it was such an immediate, just immediate tone setter of like, yeah. oh my god, oh my god, oh, that's so good. Ethan, what's your yeah. uh, what's your take on the favorite part of the match? It's for the same reason that cakes is, and it's pretty much like the same thing happening one guy just getting really badly fucked up but it was at the end when mad dog punched Demus once yeah the fucking fantastic cell punched him again Demus fucking dies <laughs> either it was yeah, like, like... The cell job of the century or he actually got legitimately like punched out super dragon yeah. necro butcher style 
but dude, it, yeah. it was so good, especially because especially because Mad Dog had the the foresight to follow through regardless. Yes, yes. He completely missed like, the third punch, but it doesn't matter because it's clear that he was gonna fucking kill him with that third punch. Yeah, fucking Damus goes down, hits the mat. Mad Dog is swinging at his head like as he is hitting the mat. Like this is. That is evil. <laughs> it's so fucking evil. And he starts like punching him into the head while he's on the ground not moving. Dude, yeah, I loved Demus's cell on that. Cause yeah, the initial first punch where he just crumples and then like tries to get back up. He's like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm not owned. I'm not owned. And then he just gets owned. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. Fucking also just shout out to the move that like predicated this because fucking uh mad dog like does a like a super bloody like fuck you hulk up kind of thing but this was after mm-hmm. he had escaped from a chain tapatia which looked like it was yeah. going to rip mad dog's head off it was Fair horrifying i point out that he didn't really escape so much as like he started hulking up and demus was like oh this is that spot and just, like, <laughs> oh. he, he just kind of like he was he was he was basking in the all like awe of you know. mad dog <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. Oh, it was so good. I love this. Oh, it was such a good match. It yeah. was such a good match. It's fucking okay. incredible. Also, I love I the fact that... I have a question for you. I don't... Yes. Oh? Hmm? Cake, I'm not sure if you've seen much of him. And uh, actually, you probably have if Andy has uh, forced you to. Has he has John. Me. Yeah. Have you oh. watched... Uh, I genuinely believe that Mad Dog is the... Uh, less uh, prone to stealing people's uh, money and stranding them in like the middle of nowhere, less constantly drugged up, or as far as we know, Buzz Sawyer. Oh, whoa! I yeah. have not seen a lot of Buzz Sawyer. Um, I think he's—I don't know. <laughs> I don't particularly like Buzz Sawyer. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen a lot of him. Um, but. Uh, I know that that's a, basically a compliment to most people. So yeah, sure, why not? Because yeah. um, he was the original I, Mad Dog. He was like the guy with. He was the first guy to do uh, to have the dog collar be like his gimmick and travel around the territories with it. You know, I think that uh, Mad Dog Bashan was the original Mad Dog in many ways. Oh no, that's true, true, true. It was Mad Dog Bashan, <laughs> but Buzz Sawyer <laughs> did like the. Uh, no, he was the rabbit dog all throughout Mid South and did a lot of dog collar matches there specifically. That's, and I think wow. his dog collar matches are like, besides uh, the Piper ones, they set the standard for like '80s dog collar matches. And I, because Buzz Sawyer looks like he looks like a goddamn Rottweiler, and so does Mad Dog Connolly. Yeah, I think one thing like also that Mad Dog does so well in this match, and Demus does really well too is again it's also like the clear sight that they definitely had some stuff planned that didn't go how they wanted but it's again it's the commitment to just going all right that didn't work moving on immediately and just making something else better out of it yeah like um when uh mad dog tries to go for a signature like gory stretch thing and he tries to use the chain but demus is such a short king that he can't get up there um <laughs> and so, he was so he exhausted that he can't lift himself yeah, and he's just, he's just so tiny that there's no way he was going to be able to do that. So he just, like, rolls off, so they try a second time. And I genuinely think the small package is improvised. I genuinely I think, so think he, Because, yeah. like, he just couldn't do it the second time. So he's like, fuck it, small package, we ball. And it was like, oh, my God, it was so good. It was it was reminding me of the O'Connor roll from Necro Butcher against Super Dragon. That's what it reminded me of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> There's a Hold lot on. of parallels that you can find with those two matches, I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is not this to say, like, oh, they're, Jesus they're, they're fucking... Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, even... There are so many yeah. parallels to that match. I haven't even thought about it in that way. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... And it's half the I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, Under. uh... There's just, um... I really don't know what else to say. I honestly really don't know what else to say. This is just a match that is in your face about how great it is even with the more minute moments it is so blatantly fucking good um and i i think that basically everyone else for the rest of the decade is gonna have to just try to work to be better than that oh it is God. a match that is that is heightened the bar 
Uh, and I don't think fa- I think there are, there's basically nobody else in the states that could go beyond the bar besides Mad Dog Conway. I know. I it really is just a matter of who gets allowance to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, if you're small enough, I don't think the commission will care because we've got a lot of outside bleeders in my l- local place like all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. Moms are not so in I, like a super populated area yeah. like fucking Casanova Valentine. Exactly. <laughs> as long as you like. Yeah, if you're a teensy weensy, if you can get Mad Dog in like some shindy somewhere, I'm sure they'll create something special because the commission's never going to check them. Yeah, uh, but, but only only if we could get him in a shindy. I don't, I don't when, know. I don't know. I don't know when he's going back to action. Listen, all we got to do is pray, pray for <laughs> Mad Dog versus Capo Paul. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Dream. I but, do have one dream. more thing to say about this match. Oh, and that oh. I believe that not only was this match like a love letter to the Segunda Caídas, like their brand of bloodbath or like the type of really wild brawl that they absolutely adore, that they would put on their match of the year list over like lauded classics. Like they have Necro Butcher versus Toby Klein as their 2004 match of the year. They're uh. I don't know what other year, but they have another, like, real brawly. No, their 2016 match of the year is, uh, was Black Terry versus Wotan before we even had, like, full footage of the thing. So this feels, like, super, not only inspired by them, but also, it feels like a love letter to American wrestling's past. It feels like a piece of history transported out of time, like, taken from some really uh really smoky but packed hall in the middle of louisiana where people are watching hacksaw jim duggan wail away at buzz sawyer chain wrapped around his fist howling right to the audience but transported into 2024 with barely anything changed and it's just beautiful to see that something that i love and thought was pretty much extinct from american wrestling and most of wrestling outside of like Kokalko and Japanese basements, and maybe if uh, Abe and Nomura have some guys who are willing to piss off the commission somewhere, that this kind of like really gritty in your face, I'm gonna bleed all over the place. There's not really much you can do about it. Wrestling can still exist, yeah. even if it's in these small pockets and bursts. And kind of especially if it's in these small pockets and bursts because you need that reminder once in a while that it still is able to go and be at this level but if it's like even uh, it would be great to have wrestling be great constantly but that's not something that we can ever like aspire for like that all the wrestling that we like will be all the wrestling that's out there but like if there are people who are kind of in our same uh, vein and can put something on, like a Mad Dog Day Moose, or even like anything else on the rest of this card, in those specific uh, areas, because this felt like a, this whole card felt like um, a call to action for people that pun very much intended that you know you should be able to have all of these different styles of wrestling coexist, but also in their own specific niches. And there aren't really that's a why, lot of places for those types of wrestling to exist. No, oh, man, that's why I brought it up, like, the fact that, like, it happens all the time where I'm at, because it happens on a smaller scale. Like yeah. you said, the Athletic Commission is going to harp down on an action or a defy or something, but, like, guaranteed it's going to work, because there was, a, there was a, again, just to point it out, there was a, a, a show... Um, called Negative Outlook in West Virginia, where I live, that had no rig, and it took place in a concert venue. So they just fought around a concert venue, and they bled a, a shit ton. Because if you're small oh, yeah. enough, if you're small enough, that's how, that's how it's going to work. And I think the call to action, so to squeak, is not um, necessarily, I think, for the bigger people. It's just for the people who are watching it to understand that it can be done. You just Again, like I said in the Hobo Hank episode, you just got to find it, man. Yeah. And I don't exactly. think it's necessarily I don't think it's necessarily that there aren't a lot of places for it anymore. It's just that due to the way that 
bureaucracy has pwned the independence. There aren't a lot of big places for it anymore. But yeah. there bureaucracy can be the independence. There yeah. can be if you are okay with getting blacklisted. Yeah, so listen, fucking uh WrestleMania weekend in how like twenty eighteen, uh multiple people got themselves banned from wrestling in the state of Louisiana because they use pile drivers. We need people that are willing. <laughs> Yeah, so we need that. So we need. But with that all being said, I I think we gotta move on to the main event. Yes, we do. Thatcher, Thatcher, Maccabe. I will say that even if all the wrestlers who are good get arrested for being wrestlers who are too good, we'll just hold WrestleMania at Rikers the next year. Yeah, (laughs) we'll we'll find Slade there too. Yeah, we got to Slade. Yeah, we have to move on. Dude, they, the they got fucking the government killed Slade because he was too good of a wrestler and he was too risky. <laughs> they chilled but, it. But Thatcher Makabe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I I was not in the arena for it. Very sad. I, I do want to, before we do this, I do want to say I have a very personal connection to Dan Makabe. I've never even talked to the guy. But uh I have been a fan of Dan Maccabe since 2015. Uh, I was very deep into the backyard wrestling scene around that time. Uh, I don't even know how I fell in. I was fucking 13. I just started finding GBYWN affiliated shows on YouTube, like highlights and shit. And I found all the stuff that was going on in Canada with I Sucks Dicks and VCW. And Dan Maccabe was a big fucking deal there. And I saw this guy, and I was like, this guy rules. And then a little bit later, I find out he's doing pro stuff. I, it's crazy, because he starts doing pro stuff. I don't find out about it until a bit into 2017, because I find out that he's wrestled Timothy Thatcher. And I'm like, yeah. I know who that guy is. I watched the first Timothy Thatcher match. I probably saw it like a few weeks after it got posted to YouTube for the first time by 3-2-1 Battle. Uh, I thought, mm-hmm. I was like, this is, this is amazing. Um, and it's been really incredible watching as time has gone on and Daniel McCabe has gone from a guy that nobody heard of except for backyard wrestlers and people that like backyard wrestling to a guy that has kind of become known as a really important figure in Seattle and you know that area of the indie scene um to a guy that people on the internet started you know some of the pundits and the tastemakers of shit started to notice there's a pretty notable video essay that got made about that trilogy. Um, and there, you know, more and more people around the world started to discover this guy named Dan Makabe. And it was, it was, it, it was weird. It was really weird. Cause I've never experienced that with any other wrestler. The only other guy that I've even gotten close to experiencing that with was Shane Strickland. Cause I found his CZW work when it was happening. Um, but Makabe was like fully from the ground up from backyard wrestler to, pretty much widely considered to be one of the best independent wrestlers in the world. Just a guy that's only limited by the fact that he is, he backyard wrestled for 20 years and his body is fucked up and he's not able to do a lot of shows. (laughs) Um, You know, he worked in Germany. He worked fucking in like, he worked in America a bunch. He's, you know, it's been incredible. And Seeing him walk out for this match, one of his last matches ever, if not his second to last match ever, I don't know if he has anything in between this and whatever ends up being his final match in three fucking months, because I think it happens in July. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if anything will happen in between. There's a, there's a uh, solid chance nothing will. I think knowing him, he might be like, I'm just going to let this be the second to last match. I'm going to kill myself. Seeing him walk out for his second to last match with red trunks, red boots and kick pads, with a camo jacket on. Camo jacket. If, this if you fu- it, this taped up, if you see that and you know who that fucking this fucking guy. I mean, he said it on the promo after. It's Dice Gate Canada's gear. Um, I saw that and I said, okay, all right, I see, <laughs> I see what's going on, and they fucking they delivered. You know, I. I think this was great. Um, I mean, this, okay. My controversial take that this was match of the night. Um, 
I know that Mad Dog Den is, is like just a master class in exactly well, I mean, come on. It's the type of master that should actually have the word master class associated with it. So I take it back. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, it's amazing, but like, you know, this was my match tonight personally because of just how idiosyncratic almost it was to be there. Um, I talked about it in the egg a little bit and Joseph commented on it as well, but it's just the fact that I think this is the only time I've ever been in a building where every single person was completely focused on one single thing. And yeah. it wasn't like a movie or something where of course you're focused on the movie. You're not allowed to do anything else. At a wrestling show, you're allowed to not pay attention. You're allowed to do anything. You're allowed to just riff with your buddy. You're allowed to talk about Aunt Lauren Chikara if that's what it prefers you <laughs> over the actual match. <laughs> you're allowed to do that if you wanted. But in this match, nobody was doing anything. They were all just focused. And I, I've never been able to experience that in a wrestling situation ever before. And it was a type of match where, I mean, again, yeah, you know, Ethan was there, he'd say it too. It was just these small, minute reactions to these small, minute things because for like the first time in who knows how long, everyone was noticing those things all at once. It wasn't like a situation where you have to point it out to somebody. It was a situation where everybody noticed because it's all that they were focusing on. Yeah. And like every single torque had an audible groan to it in the whole building. Every like slight jab that didn't even make sound still had this insane reaction, like they just hit a thigh slap or something. Because it was just, I don't know. It was like just such a, I don't know what the right word is. I don't know what the right word for it is. It was just a, like a universal commitment to dedicating themselves to seeing this. And it was so, I don't know. I love Mad Dog Dead News for the chaos and just for the feeling of being there, but this felt like a real testament to exactly why the show ever happened, I guess. Yeah. And that's why it's that's why it's personally my match of the night, because that feeling and that experience, I I don't know what I don't know when it's ever gonna happen again. No, like honestly, the emotional whiplash of going from everybody in the building scrambling out of the way from these two larger than life but actually pretty small comparatively motherfuckers eating the shit out of each other for all to see bleeding all over this tiny venue watching two men put on a performance that pays homage to two men that they both have deep reverence and fondness for while also paying a tribute to their own shared history with each other was like nothing I think I've ever experienced before. And like you no. said, Cake, everybody in the entire fucking building. The crazy thing is, you know how, uh, this is a testament to what you were saying, Cake. I, uh, you know how pretty much every match on that show has at least one clip that has a bunch of likes on Twitter? Yeah. Like, especially the Slim J one. I don't know if there's a single one from inside the venue, like somebody taking the video from their phone for Makabe Thatcher, because everybody was yeah. so focused yeah. on just watching it. I haven't seen a single clip. I was going to say, I haven't, I haven't seen a single clip from that year, and I've seen multiple clips from like every other match. Yeah. Which is like insane. Well, I have the whole thing. It's like a completely different experience than ever, anything else I've ever had in wrestling. It made me feel like I was even I wasn't even looking at anybody else. I couldn't look at anybody else to see or gauge their reactions to anything because I knew exactly what they were. They were my own because I was like a part. It felt like I was a part of something larger than myself. Like the fucking uh third impact in Evangelion where everybody just <laughs> combined <laughs> obligatory <laughs> Evangelion like, reference. <laughs> No, but no, seriously, no, I, it felt yeah. like everybody was like, had one oh, yeah. specific goal. Yeah. They were here exclusively to watch the final match between Timothy Thatcher and Daniel Maccabe and see what kind of magic and beauty they would produce against each other. And yeah. honestly, I, I watched all three of those matches like a while ago, but I hadn't gone back to them for the show because I wanted to see this pairing with completely like fresh eyes. 
And they over-delivered in a way I didn't know they could over-deliver in a situation like this. Because, man, Makabe just put in a performance that showed not only, like, all of the wear and tear and damage on his body, but how much he loves wrestling Timothy Thatcher and, like, countering all of his moves. Somebody put out a tweet, I think it was Lee Castlebolt, who, uh, Posted a gif of an Andre Kopilov uh, leg trap. Yeah. <laughs> and then he uh, tagged Daniel Makabe and said, if you hit this at Dean, I'll pay you $20. And On the spot, because he was there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, no, but he didn't pay him the $20 on the spot. He handed Aww. the money to Phil. And then uh, when I was getting my PWFG Daniel Makabe shirt from him, Phil just walked over and handed him the $20 and said, this is from Lee. I don't remember what it's for. But then Makabe the immediately remembered. What was the move again? Yeah, this yeah. match is just. Really it was really a. Uh, so he, I don't know how to explain it because I, I even like cast the fucking dude I, was like. I think I would know what it was if I was like. Okay, it was like. Uh, okay, so if I remember correctly, I think Thatcher had him in like a like a figure four neck lock and then or something like yeah. that, and then. Makabe like grabbed his ankle, put it between his legs, and then <sighs> bent it. So he was like bending his knee while he had him in that, and Thatcher yeah. had to like grab the ropes to it. Like he like reversed it. Um, I think I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. That's sick as hell. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. No, I love this match, man. It's so freaking good. I, uh, my God, it's so, so good. It's just such a good match, dude. Yeah. Uh, I was so locked in for all of it. As soon as I saw the Ikeda gear, I pointed it out to Ethan. And it was yeah. like reaction. Ethan then pointed it out to Armani. I was so enamored by just, like, the look on Makabe's face. Like, he looked like he was about to cry from his entrance. Dude, but I barely, was uh, yeah. like, internalized that he was wearing Ikeda gear I, until he pointed it was, out to me. And then I freaked the fuck out and had to tell everybody around me. I think it was because, like, yeah, when he was, like, doing the introductions, like, like, Maccabi was, like, shaking his head while his name was being called. It was like he just, like, couldn't even comprehend that this was happening, you know? Yeah. That, like, he was actually getting to do this on his, like, like, like John said, maybe last, second to last match ever. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's a truly special thing, man. It really is. Yeah. I, uh, there was a lot to fucking love here. Uh. I think this is one of the better Makabe performances I've seen of the last few years, if not like the best. Uh, he was in the fucking zone. All the grappling he was doing was tight. It was all just fascinating. Like what you were saying, like that was kind of the experience I felt watching it at home of like, I have to pay attention to what he's doing and I have to lock in and see every like little movement he was making because he was. Makabe is a guy that's fucking, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He wears his influences on his sleeve. It's not, it's very fucking, he was wearing a Keda gear. Um, but he was doing a lot of shit that really did feel like you would see it in, like, an Ishikawa grappling match nowadays. Like, it, it felt like that. Um, a lot of the bigger moments were really great, too. A lot of the great counters were great. Uh, I thought this was the best Thatcher match I've seen in a while. Uh, I've admittedly kind of cooled down on Thatcher over the years. Uh and I see a lot more of his flaws nowadays than I see his positives. And that has been that sucked because he was like one of my favorites for a while. But this is one of his best performances I've seen in years. Um because he was very, very much locked in on you know doing this type of work. Um all the strikes are great. Uh Makabe throwing fucking punches to the gut was amazing. Oh. God, yeah. Um, I Thatcher trying to uh, hit the Makabe lock. Yeah, that was really good. Um, I will say, do I think this is like a perfect match or anything? No, I don't think anyone would say it is. Um, I, actually, no, I think some people wouldn't. I think that I'd I'd agree with them. I think for what it was trying to do, it was very close to perfect. I think the one of the only complaints I have is that knowing the two guys coming into this and in Makabe walking in wearing Daisuke Ikeda gear, this felt a lot more in line with a Ishikawa Gentaro than an Ishikawa Ikeda. 
and that is like the slightest criticism that. ever. Uh, it just the it there was like a slight tonal difference from how it was being presented before the bell rang to what it actually was. Um, but the actual work itself was tremendous, and the finish <laughs> the finish was more in line with that than you know the everything else. Just fucking Makabe yeah. going wild with uh, big unit punches. Just over and over oh, again dude. and His fucking big dropped them. So good in this match. His big units were so good in this match. Yeah, I think I think Makabe is like I it's con- this might be controversial. I feel like it probably won't be. Uh Makabe has a better Arabu punch than Abe. I think he has yeah. like a Sawa has the best one ever. Like that's just I yeah. Makabe himself is I think Makabe himself has said that that Sawa is, is the best ever. Um Makabe's is a lot closer to being at that level than Abe's, though. Dude, and I these need, were some of his best. I need to ask. I think Andy, it's the follow through. I to, yeah, I to, yeah, it is. I need to ask Andy how he throws it because I really want to learn how to do it. Man. Yeah, so fucking do it. You, you, you got to go sit under the warning tree with Dan Makabe and become El Hio de Dan. <laughs> Please, Dan Makabe. Yeah, Bro, um, I got to learn how to do it. It's so fucking clean. It's incredible. It's so fucking good and. Yeah, I think that that was basically the perfect finish for this match. Um, off the top of my head, I don't even remember if, like, this might be their first match. In fact, because I haven't watched the other three. I watched all three of them when they came it's out. It's the only one with the It's the only was, one with the I was going to say, yeah, because the other three, I believe, all ended with submissions. Or, like, some, not, like, a, a like a normal leg hook pinfall. Um, yeah. And this, this is a, this match felt like a period. Like that's what Jim Lee would have felt like. The finish felt like a period. This felt like this was a conclusion. Very yes. clearly a conclusion on a one of the I'd say one of the best rivalries of the Indies of like the last decade or so. Oh, yeah, um, sure. yeah, I uh I loved it. Even if I think Conway Damus is better. Be, because I but we're talking about a match that I think is like if the tag from February twenty twenty with fucking Fishman and Wotan didn't happen, I would be genuinely saying Conway Damus might be match of the decade. Um, at bare minimum, it's match of the year. And again, uh, the fact that like, so many of these matches happen on one freaking show. Yeah, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we gotta look back. Everything that we have said about Cerebro Loco and Slim J Priest and fucking yeah. Conway Damus, we're, we're talking about the same show. <laughs> like, Golly. God. This yeah. is genuinely like, this is. Everything I said at the beginning stands true to this very moment. This show feels like a celebration of pro wrestling in a way that no WrestleMania, no AEW pay-per-view, no, like, major Japanese pro wrestling show ever can. Because it's done by the people who, like, love writing about and talking about wrestling probably more than anybody on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's really important to note with something like WrestleMania and something like the bigger AEW shows, at least in my experience with them, a lot of them feel like celebrations, but specifically of a celebration of WWE or a celebration of AEW. Uh, And I fully agree. This is one of those shows that really does feel like it's not, this isn't a celebration of action. This isn't even a celebration of the American indie scene. This is a celebration of professional wrestling using the best tools that these guys could get their hands on to do it. Like these, these are the best people they could have gotten for this type of show, outside of pulling fucking magic out of a hat and actually getting uh, Ishikawa Ikeda or getting Wotan. Like, those are like a time machine and bringing Necro Butcher back. Yeah, like the only this is for what they had, what they were capable of doing. Because I I know they were that they they shot for the stars, and the star like you know fucking again, Makabe said it. Ishikawa and Ikeda were meant to be on the show and it was planned years ago. Um, but Ishikawa and Ikeda are like in their 50s or 60s and they're not going anywhere. They, it's just not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, for what they had and they got some of the best of the fucking best to do it, this really did feel like it was celebrating something beyond the wrestlers and the promotion and everything. It felt like it was just celebrating wrestling. And I, I don't think any other show is going to be able to do that in the next fucking few years. <laughs> you know what's insane? Ikeda Ishikawa is the only match that they couldn't really get. Yeah. They got fucking Ringo and Dr. fucking Cerebro. 
They could have done Mr. Raybro, which is crazy. <laughs> they were going to go for a uh, Slim Jake Ringo Loco if Sir Raybro couldn't make it. But I'm yeah, so but, happy they went yeah. with the priest and that Loco or that Sir Raybro could make it because, oh my yeah. God. And you know what's even crazier than that, I think, is that with what um, Jonathan just said and what Ethan just said about it being a celebration of pro wrestling. I think the truly, genuinely crazy thing is there's it was not intentional. That was never the point. Because, like, I yeah. think what it was always was, it was just a show to honor Dean, right? And yeah, just, it, I think I, every, yeah. I think every wrestler wanted to honor Dean, and just by way of being like, man, we got to make sure this guy, we got to make sure this is good for this guy, you know? Just the natural, inherent love for wrestling that they had came through. Yeah, it I was, was going to say. It was uh, not like, oh, this is the plan. It was, this, this happened. Yeah, the original plan was this is a Saguna Kaida show, whenever they started planning it a few years ago. And then Dean tragically passed away. And the the plan shifted. It was like we're no longer just doing this as this is Saguna Kaida. It's this is us celebrating our fucking good friend who, you know, is not no longer with us. And yeah, I think that through the fact that they that there is such a genuine, genuine reason for this show. Because there's a lot of shows with ideas. We're running the show to make money, or we're running the show because wrestling's cool, and those are fu- that's fucking good. I I'm happy that people run shows for those reasons. That's the only reason wrestling exists. But there was this something more beyond. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it I mean, was beyond. It was more than that. It was like uh, no, nah, it was actually action, action, action wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Cake saw that I'm like blood in the water and we're a pair of sharks. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no, this is this this was a match for, this was a show for a greater purpose than like any other show that's been run in a long time. And through the pure pure heartedness of that desire to make a show that would make Dean happy. They create a show that feels like it is everything that is good about a wrestling in a time when a lot of people have gone lower on it. Like yeah. this is not even this, good this, about this wrestling. Is a, this but... is a hope. This is a hope inspiring show. <laughs> it's it's oh, a yeah, life affirming show, and it's not even like just about the great things about wrestling. It's about the great people who are actively yeah. like involved in this shit. And I'm not like I'm not trying to kiss anybody's ass here, but. Genuinely, the people who put on this show are some of the most important writers on wrestling today because they understand, like, what at least what I understand or how I view wrestling and what makes it good and what makes it, like, important to talk about on more than just the level of, oh, these people just hit really cool moves on each other because it is a lot more than that. And there is so much more that you can pick apart and talk about. And so many more people that you can pick apart and talk about than get discussed in general discourse. Like, I would have never found out about Slim J without these guys. I would have never found out about um, Crazy Crusher versus Hellstorm without these guys. I never... Yeah. I probably wouldn't have joined, like, Fujita's Egg, which led me to ultimately, like, starting this fucking podcast without finding J.R. Goldberg's uh, Armories and Snowflakes article about... Samoa Joe versus Necro Butcher. So these yeah. people like have actively shaped my wrestling fandom probably more than anybody that I'm not like directly in contact in a server with on a constant basis. And just meeting all of these people in the same place at the same time to honor their friend who is by all accounts a person that we are all like he is the giant whose shoulders we are all constantly standing on. Yeah. And to have that, uh, that like inimitable presence be uh, constantly felt throughout the show because everybody who was uh, like all the Segunda Kaida guys were talking about how even during the matches that people didn't love, Dean would have this. This is what Dean would have wanted at this yeah. show. And it just genuinely felt like a celebration of somebody's life. Even though that sounds like, you know, that's a corny but it is a true thing to say but this genuinely felt like a celebration of everything that everybody who knew dean knew and like cared for him on that level knew that he would have wanted yeah because like did you see what they put on his chair at the very beginning 
dude, fucking, they put a they put a six pack of loggers. They put a fucking eight hour VHS, and they put a Sasuke the Great mask. Like that. Okay, the loggers and the VHS, like, oh, that's Dean. You know, he's got the beer and the tapes. Sasuke the Great mask. Great mask is insane. I didn't even know how they got that fucking mask because there's no way it was easy. Um, and I know that uh, TKG, I think, said he was originally planning to bring a Super Uchu mask and then he decided on Sasuke the Great. Like, that is fucking incredible. And I'm not even saying that's incredible because, oh, these guys are cool. It's like, that's so fucking, there's so much love Beautiful. behind that, man. So much fucking love behind that. And I will say, not even going off of the love part of this, but I think that was the, uh, there are two things that that room had more of than I think any other in existence outside of uh, Japan. Outside of Japan for the second one, but for the first one, it's 100% true. The first one is that there were more people that I am following or that follow me on Twitter in one room than have ever been before or <laughs> since. That's crazy. And the other one is that I think that was like the largest collection of people outside of Japan who know who Survival Tobita is. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just maybe. Just maybe. Just fucking maybe, man. But yeah. Uh, Dean, critics are saying pretty good show. The critics are, the critics all agree. Dean is an all around fun time for the whole family. Yep. And the the kids especially, especially the make sure, children. yeah, make make sure the young children may have to look away during <laughs> Mad Dog Conway Demus. <laughs> or it could be a really interesting uh, learning experience about life for your children. You know, 